<laughs> Y'all caught me in action. <laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome in. Hello, hello. Give a thumbs up on the way in. Jeannie Young is here in effect. Happy Saturday to each and every one of you. We're going to have a great day today. If you have not given a thumbs up, take the time to back out, give a thumbs up, and then come back in. We're going to have lots and lots of fun. I'm sorry for being a couple of minutes late. I hope everybody's having a great day today. Uh, Latika, hello. Ron Wilson, hello. Agnes, hello. Maddie, hello. Susie Q, how are you? Wanda McMorris, hello. Latika, how are you today? Give me a paper towel. Sonia, how are you? Valencia, hello. Miss Dancer. Ah, <laughs> that was, it was so fun to do that, guys. It was so fun to do that. <laughs> How's everybody? Hello, V Baker, Nisi, hello, Shara, Nicole is here, Trish is here, Sunny is here. Hello, hello, hello. If I miss your name, please, please, please forgive me. If I miss your name, please forgive me. If at any time I miss your messages, try to message back in hopes that I'll see your message and I can answer your question. We are going to have a good time today here at the Young's house. We're making fried chicken. Fried chicken dinner is on the menu. Hello. Come on in. 274 of you and only 52 has given a thumbs up. Back out to give a thumbs up and then come back in. All right, that's great. Okay, let me see, let me see. Vin, hello, Saj, how are you? Michael, hello. Kate Coffee, hello, Karen and Wheezy. Hello, Christopher, hello, Mildred, how are you? Robert, Sonia, and Ron Wilson, hello. Karen Thompson, hello, hello, hello. Okay, that's great. Okay, make sure it's, it's uh, check the monetization. Check it again so I can actually visually see it. Hello, Catherine and Kim, how's everybody doing? Marcus, hello. Let me see. Valencia, hello. Rosa, hello. Let me see. Phyllis, hello, hello, hello. Is Derek Eads here yet? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Sharon Harris, hello. Okay, that's great, thank you. Okay, so listen, let's talk real quick. Let's talk real quick, just real quick. I had told you all to um, make sure, if you're cooking with me today, make sure that your potatoes were already sliced and diced. Go ahead right now. Put them babies on the stuff. Put them in some cold water. Salt the water. Just salt it. Doesn't matter how much you put in there. Don't put too much in there, you know. Um, put the potatoes in the cold water. Turn them up on a medium-high heat. We're going to plan to cook them for around about 25 minutes until those potatoes are fork tender. The first thing that we want to do is start on the mashed potatoes. So let's get them to cooking. Let's start them already. Even though I'm not behind the counter, we can start. You can start on your potatoes. Or if you did not peel and cut your potatoes ahead of time, go ahead and take this time to peel them. Peel them, get them cut. Put them in cold water, salt the water, turn them babies up on medium high, okay? Now, let me know. Somebody let me know. Are you cooking with me? Are you making fried chicken with Gina Young today? Valencia, hello. Oh, I said hello to Valencia. Christopher Williams, how are you? Horace, 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 Terry, hello. Gina, I'm just taking notes. Okay, we're cooking. Okay, Ron, that's great. Little bit, hello. Karen, how are you? Brenda, 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 how are you? Hello, hello, hello. All right. Okay, this is great. How's everybody? Rashawn is here. Hello, how are you doing today? 
All right, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, just looking at some comments here. Darren Bowen is here. Hello. Deborah is here. Saj says hello. How you doing, Saj? How you doing today? Jason Spurley is here. Hello. Latika says, I want a plate. <laughs> she says, I want a plate right now. Listen, if I happen to miss your name, please forgive me. I'll try my very best to speak to everyone if I can. If I can. Hold on, guys. I'm doing something to my computer here. Hold, give me just a second. And then guess what? We're going to get up. We're going to get up and get started cooking Jeannie Young style. Make sure you have all your ingredients out. Give a thumbs up if you have not done so. Hold on, guys, one second. There's Bobby, hello. Michelle, hello. Okay, let me, let me see what we got going on here. Okay, everybody. All right, Jeannie Young is back. There he is. Derek Eats is here. All right, Deanna, listen here. How many of you all are cooking with me today? If you're cooking with me, give me a red heart in the comment section so I can, you know, I, I want to have an idea of who's all going to be cooking with me. If you're taking notes, just say, hey, I'm just taking notes today. All right, we got Miss Lopper, is that your name? Miss Looper, Lopper is here to cook with us. Erica is cooking, Kathy's cooking, Ron Wilson's cooking, Tabby is cooking today, Taniqua, uh, that may be your name. Uh, Rhonda is cooking, okay, this is great. This is awesome. I'm getting my feet and nails done, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I see there's a lot of people saying that they're taking notes. Absolutely, that's fine. So now, <laughs> yeah, she says, uh, Sonia says, who doesn't love some good old fried chicken? I know I do. Okay, so listen, um, first thing I'm going to do, I have, thank you, Ron, uh, for telling the people to bring the thumbs up. During this live, let's make sure that the thumbs up match with the people that are in here. I can see all 374 of you in here. And I can see who's giving a thumbs up, and it's only 210 of you. Bring that up. Let's make those two numbers match. Now, I have my potatoes peeled and cut. First thing I'm going to do, when I make my way around that island, I'm going to turn around and throw those potatoes onto the stove medium high. Oh, I got more people just cooking with me. Renee P., how are you? Just watching. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, microphones on and we can get started. All right. Oh, where am I going to put the microphone at on this shirt? Oh, Lord. Let's see. I feel like it's going to fall off. Okay, we might be able to just hang it. Let's see. Let's do it this way. Oh, look at that. It ain't going to work. How, how am I going to put it on, y'all? Let's try this. Let's try it this way. Debbie Parker, hello. Welcome in. All right, we'll keep it there. And if it bothers me, I may have to change shirts. I hope it doesn't bother me. Okay, so what's going to happen right now, you will see... That Or you will hear that the sound is going to go pretty uh, low. But when I go over to the other side of the island, the sound will get much louder. Okay? Is this one? All right. 
Okay, microphone's in. Share us here. All right, let me get my apron on. Let me grab my apron. I hope y'all are having a great day today. Absolutely, I do. I hope you're having a great day today with God on your side. All right, let me turn this down just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here with the apron. Is that the right side? Yep. Thomas Smith, how are you? Alan is back. Alan, how you doing? How you doing today? You wouldn't miss the chicken meal for anything. Who is that? <laughs> okay, Derek Eats. Yeah, I, you know, I think the world loves a good fried chicken dinner. You know, so it's time we get in that kitchen and make some fried chicken. All right, I'm going to flip this camera around right now. If at any time you are having issues with the lighting, let me know and we will fix it. Okay, I'm ready to rock and roll. Who's ready? Ready to rock and roll? Let's get your potatoes on to a medium high heat. In cold water, cover the potatoes with cold water. So cover them all the way up with cold water. Salt the water. Turn them on medium high. Let's get those potatoes going right now. A little blurry. Okay, who's saying that? Linda? Okay, Linda, we're going to fix that. And you're about to see the difference right now. Here, turn that. It's blurry. Turn that. Okay, the blurriness is gone. Let, let me see. Let me see that in the Windex. Okay, we're fixing the blurriness. <clears throat> You're going to see me. I put something on the camera. Nothing is wrong with your device, so please don't freak out. I'm just cleaning the lens a little bit just to make sure you have a nice, clean, clear picture. Every time before making a video or going live, we clean the lens off. I may have put my fingerprints onto it. There we go. Let's have fun. <clears throat> Come on. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to grab my potatoes out. I'm putting them on the stove behind me, up on medium high. I'm going to wash my hands first. So if you're cooking with me, making sure your hands are impeccably clean. I know, I know, I know. I say it, and sometimes I crack myself up when I say it. I need that. Um, let me see. Okay, got the computer. Got the computer so I can see everybody's messages today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hands are getting nice and clean here. I will show you all. Is it right? Why is the uh, light going dim? <clears throat> yeah. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me this. That shirt is fire, says Drew. Thank you. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh. What was I going to say? <laughs> I feel like I know what I was going to say, but not really. Let me show you all uh, what my potatoes look like, just in case you don't know how to cut them. Okay, so come in and just look at my hand. That's how I cut the potatoes, okay? Nice cold water, rinse your potatoes off after cutting and peeling them. Put them in cold water, salt the water. We boil them up on medium high heat. Put that microphone up, up high. I don't know why the light has dim. Somebody tell me in the comment section, can you guys hear me well? Can you hear me well or does it sound far away? That's what I would like to know. <clears throat> yes, they're saying yes, it sounds well. I can hear you. Okay, so go ahead and put that up there. So they're saying it's working. Thank you guys. I love you all so much. Okay, so my potatoes are going into my pan. 
of cold water and I'm going to salt the water, turn it up on medium high. I'm just, honestly, I'm repeating myself for those that may have missed something if I said something, you know. I'm grabbing a little bit of salt, just a pinch or two of salt in the water. If you're making rice, you're making potatoes, you're making noodles, you salt it so it tastes good. You got you to gotta make everything have flavor. And that even goes for even when you're boiling potatoes, rice, and noodles. Okay? So now, I'm not going to go anywhere yet. <clears throat> That's an awesome shirt. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> hey, I greatly appreciate it. I just asked my husband right before I went on, I said, is my shirt okay? I said, because if it's not, I'm going to change it. He's like, you, he said, you know that shirt looked nice. <laughs> Thank you. He picked it out for me. I just haven't worn it before. So thank you all. <clears throat> Is everybody ready to get started cooking? <clears throat> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for coming in, Nurley. Welcome back. Debbie Parker says, Let, let's do it. Okay. Drew Moss, I love this Shirt, Miss Jill. Oh, oh my goodness, Miss Jill Scott. Lord. <laughs> okay, so now I have some beautiful chicken here. Beautiful, beautiful chicken. I have broken this chicken down into two pieces. So what I would like to do, I've already washed off my chicken. If you don't know how to wash chicken off, you can just literally take some cold water, some salt, and just rub the chicken up against each other with the salt and the cold water and then pat it dry, okay? Now, a lot of times when I wash my meat, I will rub the meat with lemon juice or lime juice or even uh, vinegar. But today I just did a little bit of salt, cold water, and then we've pat this dry, okay? All right, so now, if your wings come whole, there are several different things that we can do to these wings. You can keep them whole and cook them whole, you know, into a whole piece, or you can break them down into two pieces. And I'm going to take my rings off right now so I can show you how to do that, okay? So what I've done prior to this live is I've already cut the wings down. But I left two so I can show you what I'm talking about. So if the camera will come nice and close to me, I want to look at the diaphragm. <laughs> is that the right word? The makeup of the chicken wing. So this is the flat part, of course. That's the part that I love. This is the drum part. And of course, that's the wing tip. I like to cut the wing tip off, just like so. <clears throat> Give it a nice saw. And sometimes it'll come right off. How, how easy, right? And save these because you can put them into a freezer bag and use them to make a beautiful broth, okay? Now, how to get the two pieces. There's a joint right there. You can see that joint moving. You can see the joint. So that's kind of like an indicator point to slice through. Very easy to slice through and make your two pieces, okay? So now, for those that don't want to take the time to do that, you can take this wing and you can fold the wing over top of itself like this and fry your chicken, which that's something that I do a whole lot for the person in the background that didn't see that. I want to show you again, okay? You take that wing tip. We're not cutting it off if you want to leave it on. I actually like to chew on this, but if I'm making wings, I like to cut them. But if you don't, you just fold it over top of each other and do it like this, okay? Pretty simple. You bet it is. All right. So now I'm cutting that piece off, making it into two, and I'm going to show you how I like to season it and what we're going to do to make these wings taste absolutely amazing. 
Okay, I've showed you this technique. Tick, get it together, Gina. I've showed you this technique before, but I'm gonna show you again. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna wash my hands because anytime you're touching raw meats, you gotta wash your hands to make sure that you don't transfer bacteria. And I don't want to transfer any salmonella or bacteria to my spices. So I'm washing my hands so we don't have to deal with that situation, you know? So now, what we're gonna do, got potatoes cooking, medium high, we salted the water. Everybody with me? This is a retired teacher out of California, and I love you. Thank you, Carolyn, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, absolutely. So now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and season this chicken up. We're gonna use garlic and onion powder, and I'm not gonna be shy with the seasonings, okay? Garlic and onion powder, just like so, how about it? Don't you be afraid to season. When you're afraid to season, your food will be flavorless and you'll be disappointed. Okay, so I'm going in with the garlic and onion powder and then I'm gonna season the other side as well. Some people just like to throw their spices on and then after they get the spices on, they kinda, you know, massage it into all of the wings. I like to season one side and flip them over and season the other side. That way I can make sure that every wing has got amazing flavor onto it, okay? Right in this ramekin, I put um, salt and pepper, okay? I'm just gonna mix the two together. And I'm going in on these chicken wings. Okay. How's this? Oh, ho, 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 ho. And to paprika, I'm not gonna use a whole lot of paprika, and this is not smoked paprika, okay? If somebody has a major question, put a stop sign in the chat, and I'll get to you in hopes that I can get to you. Okay, so now that we've seasoned that well, I like to go in, I'm just gonna use my, so I don't have to get my hands dirty. I'm gonna use my fork to give them a nice turnover just like so in this manner. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side, okay? And I actually want for this chicken, <clears throat> excuse me, to sit with these beautiful spices in the marinade on it for at least 10 minutes before we cook it, okay? Because when you do that and you let things kind of sit for a while before cooking, it's gonna taste better. You know, and honestly, if we had like the night before, you could have seasoned it the night before, it even builds up even more flavor, believe it or not. Okay? All right, so now it's time to season the other side, and then we're gonna go in with a really interesting ingredient. We're gonna go in with that mustard. Yes, we are. Is it gonna taste like mustard, Gina? Oh my goodness, nope. I promise you, I need you. I need you to trust me on this one, okay? Come back in, we're seasoning. We're seasoning. A little bit of paprika. Not a whole lot, this is not smoked paprika. Okay, salt and pepper once again. Beautiful, don't be afraid to season. If you need to lighten up on your salt, feel free. Feel free, feel free to use a salt substitute if that's what you like to use, if you're allowed to use it, you know. All right, see the chicken is seasoned up very well. Okay, I'm gonna move my spices aside. Okay, and the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna take some mustard. Don't get crazy with this mustard. Don't overwhelm the situation by putting too much onto your chicken, guess why? Well, the reason why you don't wanna put too much <clears throat> is because you can mess up the texture of the batter. <clears throat> We want for this chicken to cook up nice and crispy, beautiful and golden brown. And if you weigh it down too much with too much mustard, you can kind of mess that up. So let me show you how much, okay? It will look like a lot in the beginning, but really it's not. And I love the aroma, the color, the flavor, the taste that this mustard is gonna give your chicken. 
Just trust me when I, when Gina Young tells you, just trust me. Guess what? That's it. That's it? Absolutely. Okay, so now we can kind of rub the pieces onto each other, just like so in this manner. And then we're gonna let it set for about 10 minutes, okay? Once that 10 minutes is up, we're gonna dredge this chicken in just plain all-purpose flour. Now I wanna go ahead and answer this question before the question arises. Um, Gina, are we gonna season our flour? I'm somebody that doesn't season my flour. I know, I know it's totally nuts, right? Because there's a lot of people that seasons their flour. I don't. I find that seasoning my flour when I'm making fried chicken will burn. The seasonings in the flour will burn and you'll have a fried chicken that has a really dark, dark color and that's not what I'm looking for. So I like to season the chicken well, right? And I just have regular all-purpose flour. If for some reason you have self-rising flour, you got rice flour, that's fine too. You may have wheat flour, that's fine, okay? So you can see that I'm massaging everything in, you know, kind of rubbing wings on top of each other. We're gonna let this set for 10 minutes and I'm gonna sit and chit chat. Well, not sit, we're not gonna sit down yet, but we're gonna chit chat. I'm gonna be reading some messages and seeing how everybody's doing. So at this point, everybody should have their potatoes in the water, boiling with salt, okay? And you should have seasoned up your wings, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, and paprika, okay? Let's set these wings over here. I wanna wash my hands, and then I also wanna wash off my cutting board, okay? The clouds are up. How's everybody doing? You used to season flour. Okay, that's absolutely great, okay? Doing well, okay. You're not cooking, but you're watching, Drew, okay. My holy king, welcome back in, and Shell, hello. All right, so what we're doing right now, I'm just gonna wash my hands, I wanna wash my cutting board, and then I want to grab, while we're waiting on the chicken to kind of marinate for that 10 minutes, let's go ahead and get our broccoli prepared, okay? Everybody doing okay? So did somebody ask me something? Let me see what you're saying. Somebody, somebody put something in the chat. What did you say? Okay, Gina is not going to season. Oh, okay, thank you, Sonia. That's Sonia. <laughs> okay. Use, you can use a spicy mustard? Absolutely you can. If that's what you love, I would not suggest using a brown sugar mustard. Guess why? You won't use a brown sugar mustard because it has sugar in it and it would totally burn. Your chicken, once it started cooking, you would see that it would start to cook up and get really dark brown. And what that would be is the sugars in the sweet mustard. You know, if you were to use like a brown sugar mustard or a honey mustard, you don't wanna use that, okay? But I, uh, yes, you definitely can use spicy mustard. That's actually something that I never thought of. Can you do what? Ketchup. Um, uh, you, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody needs to invent the ketchup. <laughs> Somebody has to invent the ketchup deal. I don't know how that would even work. But I tell you what, you know, you can dip your chicken in ketchup after it's fried. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, Golden Girl says ketchup. No, see now, she said, see now, we're getting carried away. <laughs> All right, I'm grabbing my broccoli. My broccoli has been washed. Okay, and what we're gonna do, wash off your broccoli, okay? Gotta wash it. You never know who's handled it before you brought it home. And then you'll wanna make sure that there's no uh, little buggies on it, you know. Okay, 
So now, is everybody that's cooking with me, are you all doing okay? And are you ready to move on? Are you ready to move forward? Oh, you use hot sauce and it's so good. Okay, okay. I'm with you. Okay, Ron. Dropped on the floor. It could have been dropped on the floor. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that person that asked about the ketchup, maybe they were playing. This is Water Sniper. Do you use those vegetable sprays to clean your veggies? I don't. You don't have to highlight my name um, in the chat. I don't. Um, I have never used them, actually. I just use water to wash off my fruits and vegetables. Yep. Yeah, G. Hu just says, or they could have coughed on it. <laughs> right? What, what, what's happening? Oh, hold on, guys. What happened? Oh, well, don't touch it. Okay. Okay. There's some people in the chat that were saying they're with me and they're ready to move forward. Uh, you can use frozen broccoli. Absolutely you can. You know you can. Or you can use the fresh. Um, and you're not a fan of the mustard, just fry it up regular. So if you're cooking with me today, just season it without the mustard and then proceed with the flour. <laughs> I don't know about, oh Lord. <laughs> so let me show you, this is really interesting what I like to do with my florets. Okay, I just cut them. I just cut them, cut them, cut them. Cut them like that, okay? And then you can break them down even further if you like. And now take a look in the pan. You'll see that I got a little bit of water in there. It's not a whole lot of water, but it's in there, you know? Okay? So break your broccoli down as much as you can. You can even do this once you cut it. Okay, I don't like a whole lot of stem on my broccoli when I make it. So if I have a lot of stem, I cut it off. Okay, so I got four heads of ca um, cabbages on my brain because I made it the other day. Got four heads of broccoli. We are going to season our water with chicken powder, believe it or not. And then also we're going to use some butter. And that's the only thing we're going to season our broccoli with. And guess what? This broccoli is going to have so much flavor. You can use black pepper. Absolutely you can. Or any kind of pepper you like to use. Now, those of you that want to make this broccoli have a cheese sauce, uh, raise your hand or, you know, give me a stop sign and I'll tell you how to make a cheese sauce for your broccoli today, okay? Yeah, I got it mixed up, the cabbage and the broccoli. I, you know, remember we did the cabbage the other day. I had so much fun. And I still have that cabbage on my brain because it was so delicious. The potatoes are cooking up. And um, we're going to be checking on them here very soon. It's Saturday. Happy, 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 happy Saturday. Jesus is Lord. Absolutely. Welcome in. Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> Welcome all of the new subscribers. Listen, if you're a new subscriber coming in today and you have subscribed, tell me what your name is. Even if I miss your message, if the people in the chat can please welcome all of the new subscribers, that would be great. And I'd like to welcome all of the returning subscribers right now. As I appreciate y'all being here. I love y'all so much. So now, I want to talk about something right now while we're cutting our broccoli. If you get, <clears throat> Mildred had brought up um, to me that someone had telegrammed her saying, or, or somebody had said, hey, um, thank you for commenting, uh, telegram me. I don't telegram. I don't know what telegram is. So it's basically somebody being a scammer, you know? So what you do 
is you can always press those three dots beside um, their name and report them, okay? She, uh, Mildred has given me their name. I'm going to block and report them, and that way, you know, that issue can be taken care of. But always, always look at their channel, and when you look at their channel, if it does not show the check mark beside, thank you, Geneve, Geneve Smith, if it does not show the check mark beside the name in the kitchen with Gina Young, it's not Gina Young, okay? I do not telegram, okay? I don't say any messages about telegramming me, okay? Only original name that I have is in the kitchen with Gina Young, and always that check mark at the end of the name. So when you all are reading messages, please make sure you're looking for in the kitchen with Gina Young and always that check mark. If you don't see it, it ain't Gina Young because you can always go to their page and it might say they started their channel like seven days ago. They got two subscribers, you know, so you're going to be able to really look into it when you hit those dots beside their name, okay? Yes, we are having K Coffee and G Huge's. We are having mashed potatoes with it. Uh huh. Return. What's the returning subscriber mean? Returning subscriber means you, little bit like you. You're subscribed to my channel, and also you you always return. So what I was saying is welcome back to the returning subscribers, and then I also said welcome to the new subscribers. <laughs> Uh-oh, T. Smith. T. Smith has got something great that they're saying right now. T. Smith says, pl plug that plug in right now. T. Smith says, if you don't season, plug this plug right here. If you don't season, close the kitchen down. <laughs> and you know what? That's so funny. I absolutely... I love it. <laughs> okay, it was funny. That was good and funny. So now, I'm going to have you all look at my potato um, because we need to talk about what, can you plug it in? No, this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it's on. Sorry about that. Um, I want to talk about what the a uh, fork tender potato will look like, okay? Here's what a fork potato would look like. If you take your fork, you go inside, and it goes in with ease, you know what a fork tender potato looks like. Okay, I'm going to taste that baby too. Mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. It's good. Nice and soft. Sometimes you can even stick the fork down into the potato and then pick it up and the, and the potato will slide off with ease. If that happens, then it's, it's, it's done. So guess what? I'm, I need to check my microphone here because the light has went off. I'm going to check that and then I'm going to turn my potatoes off because they're done. So right now you all can be checking your potatoes, okay? Check your potatoes to see if they're fork tender. If they're not, keep them going for a minute, okay? Let me check the microphone. I'm not going too far. So let me see what we got going on here. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Okay, they can hear me. We're just losing the light for some reason. It's okay. All right, so now, I'm about to break out into that dance. I ain't stressing today. I had so much fun making. I had so much fun, but the hardest part, I know y'all talked about the ladder. I was on that ladder like, right? The ladder was unsteady. <laughs> it was, but that wasn't the scariest part. The scariest part of that video and I'll tell the people that don't know what I'm talking about. I did a short video. In the short video, I did the I'm not stressing today dance. 
and uh, I decided to get into the, because you want to go to like weird places and do this dance. When I decided to stand in the bathtub and I listened to my son because he said, okay, mom, when you get in the bathtub, stand on the stool. I thought, how the heck am I going to stand on the stool and the, the, the one part is this big? Well, I got up there and I did. <laughs> and I held my feet real close together and I'm up there dancing. And I know y'all had just the time of your life watching that video. <laughs> I'm not going to break out in that dance today. <laughs> but I ain't stressing today. <laughs> I'm going to cook the chicken back here. So now, check your potatoes. Thank you, Sonia. Your potatoes should be done. Let's go ahead, take them out, and drain them in a colander. Okay, you know what the colander is, where it has the holes in it, or you can use a lid to drain your potatoes. Let's get all that liquid out of the potatoes, okay? So I'm going to drain them. And while I do that, I have to move the computer so no steam goes into my computer. Uh, I, I know, I know about the um, subscribers. That's interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some type of party is going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting party. So this is just the pot that I boiled the potatoes in. Okay. And I'm going to, since I've drained the potatoes, I'm going to put those potatoes back into that same pot. Okay. And that's the pot that I want to mix them in. Guess why? because I want to keep those potatoes nice and hot. And by using this hot pan, it's going to keep the potatoes hot, like I said. So now, you want milk. You want butter, salt, and pepper. OK? Now, normally, I will be telling you all to heat up your butter and your milk. And today, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing it today. We're going to put some milk, some butter in here, some salt and pepper. We're going to salt and pepper the potatoes last. Because if you salt them too early, uh, they'll get kind of gummy. You can mash these up with the fork, mash them up with a potato masher, or you can use a handheld beater. Let's make mashed potatoes Gina Young style. Like I said, not all the time do I heat up my milk and butter. We're not going to do it today. But a lot of times I do. They're going to be delicious. All right? And then after we mix our potatoes up, we're going to flour our chicken, okay? All right? What is it? What are you doing? Doing what? Why? Okay. All right, everybody. So now I'm going to start off. Come on in so you can see how much. How much, Dina? Well, start off with a little bit, just a little tiny bit of milk. Okay, if you start off with too much, it's going to be running. See, I just started off with a little bit, but I am going to put a whole stick of butter. I know, Dina, a whole, yes, a whole stick of butter. Mm hmm. Because it, guess why? Because it tastes good. <laughs> Salt and pepper last. Okay, let's go ahead and blend it together, and then we can always move these potatoes to a separate bowl, a different bowl after we're done blending. Okay? The potatoes are heating up. The potatoes are heating up um, that butter and that milk. bit more. 
more milk, so I'm going to put a little tiny bit in. Look how simple that was. Somebody please, and guess what? I got to take a spoon. I have to take the spoon and taste it. Tina, but you ain't put salt and pepper in there. I know, but I ain't ate all day. I haven't ate all day. <laughs> I got to taste these potatoes. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Salt and pepper. Don't be shy. With the salt and pepper, you need it for it to taste good. Potatoes are done. All right, guess what it's time to do? We're going to put this into um, a separate bowl because I don't want to serve the mashed potatoes in this pan. And then we're going to dredge up our chicken. I want you to turn your oil on. Turn your oil on to a medium high heat and fill your pan up with oil. At least put this much oil in your pan so the chicken has room to rise up in the pan, okay? Did I tell you what, those potatoes were so stinking good. Oh my goodness. Oh wee. I gotta taste them again. I'm, us I'm using a different spoon. Don't freak out. I'll say, mm, mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. We have been watching our carbs over here <laughs> after tasting these delicious potatoes. We have been watching our carbs. And so, but I did want to make a carb today because I know you all want, you know, you want that starch, you want that vegetable and that meat. So I figured mashed potatoes, they're going to love mashed potatoes. Okay, so that's what we did. I'm going to eat a little bit, you know, I'm going to watch the portion though, you know? All right, gorgeous. We got potatoes and they look good. Ooh, wee. I, I want to wipe off my bowl. Make sure that your broccoli is cooking. Medium, medium high heat. Just keep a good eye on it, okay? Look at that. Somebody come in and look at the creaminess. And if you want to, you can put a tad of butter right there, okay? I'm tasting this. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh I can't stop myself. I'm putting this over here. I'm turning my oil on. Okay? Let's see. I got two pans that I'm going to be cooking chicken in. Turning the heat up on medium high. Let's get that oil nice and hot. You got the broccoli going. I'm going to cover my broccoli with uh, a little bit of aluminum foil. And it can really steam, you know. You don't have to cover your broccoli up if you don't want to, but I'm going to cover it up since we're doing a live. I don't want all that steam going everywhere, okay? So now that we've handled that situation, <coughs> excuse me, I will wash my hands after coughing. Let's get ready to dredge up our chicken. <coughs> all right, I'm going to wash my hands. Anytime you're coughing, you're sneezing, <coughs> wash your hands. Uh, we don't eat out often, but we do eat out. You know, like um, yesterday, we had Caribbean food. You know, so um, we do eat out. Um from time to time, but I don't know if we eat out 
as much as the average person does, you know? I don't believe we do. Okay, we got this beautiful chicken that has marinated. Let's go ahead and start to dredge it. <clears throat> In the flour. Okay, you should have your broccoli going if it's not going already. Okay. <clears throat> Grab your chicken. I'm going to de-bling, take my bling off again. And now it's time to put our chicken into the flour. Here's how I like to do it. Just give it a nice roll. How about it? Okay, and before it goes into that oil, you give it a nice shake. The purpose for shaking it, you may have heard me say this before, is naturally, when the chicken is frying up, flour is going to fall off the bottom or fall off of your chicken to the bottom. You don't want a whole lot of extra flour falling off, hitting the bottom and burning, and then your chicken has a burnt flavor. You can prevent that by giving it a nice shake just like this before going into the pan, and then you won't have a whole lot of excess flour that, um, you know, burnt in the bottom of your pan. So let's dredge all the chicken up just like so. And uh, that all we're waiting on is that oil to get hot. Potatoes are done. Broccoli is cooking. We're having fun here at the Young's house. I'm going to look at some of the comments right now, see what everybody's talking about. Okay. Okay, so Susie Q says, yes, please, shake the flour off. Gina, can you FedEx me a plate, says Randy. <laughs> Absolutely, I can. Eula. Donna Marie, hello. Linda Green, hello. Hi, Gina. I love your I'm not as usual Miss Noni. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe I didn't understand the message. Let me see. What's cooking? Says Quentin. I am actually cooking fried chicken. T. Smith, I understand where you're coming from, says Christopher. Is it better to use foil? Guess what? That's, that's such a funny question. Um, but it's not a bad question. I use foil because I'm so, I, I can be lazy <laughs> at times when it comes to looking for the lid that goes with the pan. I'd rather grab foil out of my, you know, <laughs> I'd rather grab foil than to look for that lid because sometimes you never know where the lid can be and I'm not doing all that. <laughs> so a lot of times I have the lid, I just use foil because I'm not going under that cabinet looking for that lid. <laughs> I'm doing okay, Marlon, how are you? I feel you on that, Gina, says Miss Karen. Absolutely. So now this amount, this is a family pack of wings. This amount of wings can usually be cooked in two pans. So I have two pans with oil, and I'm going to be having two pans going at once. Did you use eggs before the flour? No, I did not. <clears throat> um, feel free to rewind the live back a little bit so you can see what I did if you missed anything. And or you can always go back and watch the replay. <clears throat> Are you going to cook for St. Patrick's Day? <clears throat> yes, I am. I believe I'm going to do the corned beef and cabbage. I believe. Don't quote me on that. And then y'all wanted me to do the shamrock shake. So I'm going to make the shamrock shake, and I'm excited about that because I've, I've never tasted it, never made it, but I think I have an idea of how it should be cooked, made. What happened to Jimmy Carter, says Derek?
Okay, so my fried chi or my chicken is all dredged up. Is your chicken ready to go into the oil? If your chicken is ready to go into the oil, I want you all to check the oil and make sure that it's nice and hot. And I'm going to show you what I like to check for to make sure that my oil is hot enough to fry chicken. Okay, I'm going to show you what I like to do. I've showed you all in the past, but for those that has never seen my little technique, I'm going to show you again, okay? And, and what I like to do, I like to take a little bit of flour in my fingertips and I just drop it like this into the pan. And if that oil sizzles right away, like pssst, if you see that sizzle and it kind of disappears really quickly, your oil is perfectly hot. Don't have the heat up too high because you're going to burn the outside and the inside will not get done. Medium high, okay? That's what we're going to be cooking this chicken on today. Not medium, medium high, okay? Now, if you turn around and you put flour, <coughs> excuse me, into your oil and that flour, you get to see the flour go to the bottom and it never did that sizzle, that means your oil needs to heat up a little bit longer. But <clears throat> no worries for the people that really don't understand what I'm talking about because I'm literally going to show you. When I test my oil, when it's time to look at it, I'll show you what you should be looking for, okay? So I'm going to test it right now, but I'll still show you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I'm going to give my oil about <clears throat> three or four more minutes, and I feel like the oil will be hot enough. And then we'll walk over, and I'll show you my little trick. <clears throat> Make sure you have a cookie sheet or something to put your chicken on when it's done. Some of you may like to use, you know, like a paper towel or whatever. I'm going to be putting my chicken on to a cookie sheet in a cooling rack so that, can you grab that? So that my chicken does not get soggy when I set it down. <clears throat> because if you just set it onto a plate, it'll soak up a bunch of oil when we're trying to get rid of the oil. So if you don't set yours onto a paper towel, I want you to set yours onto a cooling rack that looks something like this. Cookie sheet, cooling rack. Okay, cooling rack will allow circulation <coughs> and it will allow, it will also allow um, for your chicken not to get soggy when you set your chicken down. Come over here, I want everybody to follow me over to the big stove and let's check our oil together. <clears throat> you can absolutely check on your broccoli at any time because it should be just about done, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me that I have to keep clearing my throat. Okay, everybody. So now, that's the sizzle. That's the sizzle that I'm looking for. Come in on this one. That's it. That's it. I need that sizzle. I need it. Let's try this again. Yes, that's what it does. Okay, so let's begin to come over here and take a look at my chicken. Shake it off, shake it off, shake, 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 shake it off, right? Into the oil, okay? And look in the oil, what's happening? It started sizzling right away, okay? Let's get some chicken frying. <clears throat> let's do it, Gina Young style, chicken going in. Don't be afraid, all right? Beautiful. And then it'll really begin to sizzle here in just a little bit, okay? You can go back. <clears throat> so I'm going to do all of this chicken into the two pans. Just like so. How? How easy. I tell y'all what, I've been taking, I told you all I've been taking that Mucinex. In that Mucinex, I, I think, I think that I feel like 
it's helping with the mucus that was in my chest. But more than anything, I feel like it, it could be giving me some issues because I keep having to, instead of cough now, I keep having to clear my throat and I'm losing my voice. So I guess we'll see. We'll see where the mucinex leads me. I may have to tell my doctor it's just not working. I don't know. Check on your broccoli. Get your chicken in. <clears throat> And once your chicken gets in, I don't want nobody bothering that chicken. Leave it alone. <clears throat> Leave it alone. All right, I'll be back into the equation here in just a second. <clears throat> Got about six or seven more pieces to put into the oil. <clears throat> if you have an overhood fan, turn the fan up because you don't want to create a whole lot of um, a whole lot of steam. Okay, you you want for that overhood fan to suck up any steam or or that extra heat. Okay. We're moving in the right direction. I'm proud of y'all. <clears throat> There's a lot of people out there that think that they don't know how to make something. And then I feel like when we cook it together, you're just totally in your element. You know, and you know you can do it. And I love that. Because you can, and it's easy. And, and I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to show you all how easy cooking can be. Absolutely. Let's get our hands washed, and then we're going to come back and check on our broccoli. Mashed potatoes are done. Your chicken should be frying. Broccoli is cooking. Okay, let's wash our hands. Claudia, hello. Vanessa, hello. For garlic mashed potatoes, do you use fresh garlic or just garlic powder? Um, I'd like to say both. Garlic mashed potatoes, I will sometimes do something really, really interesting. I I'm holding my hand like this, so I got flour on it. Um, what I'll do, I'll take some fresh garlic and I'll take the skin off and I'll kind of smash it, right? Throw it in with the potatoes when you're boiling them. <laughs> Check me out. Throw that fresh garlic in with the potatoes when you're boiling them. It cooks down. All of the flavor is extracted into those potatoes in the water. And when you drain your potatoes, st still keep that large piece of garlic. It'll be really mushy. And you blend it up when you're blending your potatoes up. How about that? Delicious. And then if you, when you taste it, you think you need more garlic flavor, put you some garlic powder in there. Great question there. Yes. So I make a Haitian uh, spaghetti. And what I do when I make the Haitian spaghetti, I do the garlic that way on the spaghetti noodles. I cook the crushed garlic um, in with my spaghetti noodles. And those are some of the best spaghetti noodles, you hear me? I mean, they are packed with flavor, and it's some of the best spaghetti that I make. Oh, my goodness. Ooh-wee. You know, here's the thing. I don't do a lot of... I, I feel like the world... Uh, how do I want to say this? Or Let's see, let's see. I feel like not enough people want to try different recipes. Like, for instance, the Haitian spaghetti. I think that the world should taste this. It's so amazing. But when people come out of their comfort zone a little bit, they say, no, ah, uh, no thanks, I don't want to try it. And they won't try it and they never know. You know, and that drives me nuts because I'm like, dang, if they just knew how delicious this was, oh, wait. 
Uh, Deborah, what did Deborah say? Let me go back to see what Deborah is saying. Let's see. Okay, let's see if I can see her. I like roasted garlic and mashed potatoes too. Oh, okay, yeah. Derek says, ooh, wee, cracks me up. Maybe I missed a message. I made your chicken spaghetti. It was awesome. Oh, yes. Listen, if you made the chicken spaghetti, you have a new life <laughs> because you have a new recipe and you will never forget that recipe because that chicken spaghetti is so delicious. So now you may see that I have a clean, wet paper towel that I like to put underneath my cutting board. That way uh, my cutting board doesn't go slipping and sliding on me. I'm going to check the broccoli. Chicken is cooking up. You can hear that slight sizzle. If it's sizzling too loud or too hard, that means that you totally have the heat up too high. Ooh, got some gorgeous broccoli there. Okay, so now is there anybody in the chat? We love the things you say, Gina. Cracks us up, though. <laughs> okay, Derek. All right. So I want to check my broccoli. You all can take a look in at it and see what I got going on in this pan. Or I can pick one up. Beautiful. Not mushy. It's just perfect. Let me see. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put chicken powder. That's our seasoning today for the broccoli. Chicken powder. It may be Maggi pollo, okay? It, chicken powder is a chicken bouillon powder. It gives pretty much anything you use on it. Amazing flavor. I'm going to use some black pepper, and also I'm going to use some butter. And then I'm going to put the foil back on it uh, to melt the butter, OK? But Gina, you still got a little bit of liquid in there. I like that in there. Keep it in there, OK? Now, um, were you anybody? Let's see. The job isn't even hard. They may because they can't go to the club during the weekend. You have such a lovely spirit, can't help but love you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Fresh actually looks better than frozen. I, I like both. I do, I like both. Here, let me see. Butter. Now, was there anybody that wanted to know how to turn this into Cheesy broccoli? If you wanted to know, I can tell you how I like to make mine. And I just have to be honest, when it comes to putting butter in here, I'm going to put a nice amount in there. You hear me? I'm going to put a couple of tads right on top so it can just melt over top of that broccoli. And the broccoli is done. Normally when I make broccoli, what I do is I make a cheese sauce, right? And my family loves it that way. But I figured let's do it a little different. Let's do the regular broccoli. <laughs> Derek says, oh, no, not the socks off. Gina, I like your big pan. Thank you, Rosa. I love the cheese, too. I can't wait for you to cook another Chinese dish. Okay. It, it does. The, you need the butter for it, you know? So I want you all to come in and take a look at this. It's just, like, packed with so much flavor there. You hear me? This broccoli is going to be so beautiful oh, and so tasty. Leave that little bit of water in the bottom. And when that butter melts down and mixes with that water, you kind of have like a butter sauce, a flavored butter sauce, because we have that chicken powder in there. Do this and turn your burner off. Chicken is cooking. So I think now, hold on, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I think now I'm going to wash my hands. It's the perfect time for me to come around there, 
We can chit chat for a little bit if it's okay with y'all. Oh, Jimmy Carter is in hospice. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay, there she goes again, guys. Another amazing dish. Gina, have you ever had loaded mashed potatoes? Um, not loaded mashed potatoes. I have to say no to that. Let me go ahead and wash my hands. Now, when I go around there, I need you to wash up a little bit of dishes, okay? You got just a little bit of dishes, okay? So you make sure you get them done, and I'm going to go around and talk to the people, okay? And you can put that up as well, okay? Thank you. Here, you want to take these beaters out too, okay? Okay, everybody, I'm coming around. I'm coming around. We're going to chit-chat until our chicken gets done. Make sure you have something to set your chicken on. This is what I have. And if you don't have this, use um, something and line it with paper towels. You can soak up that extra... Um, Soak up that extra oil from your chicken. So put this nearby, okay? And I am coming around. We're gonna have a fun time talking until the chicken is done. Now, Gina, should I mess with the chicken right now? Nope. You ain't gotta mess with it right now. Because guess why? If you mess with the chicken right now, all of that hard work you put in to make a beautiful golden brown crispy chicken, it's gonna fall off if you mess with it right now. That batter is gonna fall off. So let's let it, let that batter start to form and get a little hard, and then you can go in messing with it with the spatula, spoon, or whatever you wanna use, okay? But I do wanna show you what I'm gonna use also. If you don't have This is called a spider. If you don't have this to take your chicken out of the pan or move your chicken around with, then you get a slotted spoon. And that's going to be most successful because it's going to be able to drain that hot oil. You don't want to lift your chicken up and you've got a bunch of oil in your spoon, okay? Make sure you have holes in your spoon, okay? I'm coming, out, I'm coming around and we can talk, okay? All right, everything's going well. Make sure your chicken is not up too high. All right, let's talk. Do you think, I think that the lighting is not the greatest for some reason over there. What do you think? Okay, everybody, guess what? We did it. We did it. How, how's it going for the people that's cooking with me? Hey, Latricia, says Ron. Teddy T6 is here. All of your dishes sound amazing. I like, what do you, let me see. Let me, hold, hold on, guys. Let me see. It's not what? Okay, well, let me see. Hold on, guys. What do you mean? The video's not loading? It is now, but it wasn't. So, well, tell me what you're talking about. The video on there was not loading. Okay. It's loading now, correct? Okay. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. If you're cooking with me, how are you doing? Are you stressed out? Are you happy? Are you nervous? Are you proud of yourself that you are doing the doggone thing? Gina, I checked it out. I ain't stressing today. Full video, and I love it. <laughs> I haven't even seen the full video, like the original video. I just seen people doing, you know, that video. <laughs> going well. Okay, Maddie. Maddie says it's going well with her. Alyssa says I'm saying hi again, Gina, because... You missed my first comment. Alyssa, welcome back in. Thank you for coming in. I'm so sorry, but thank you for re-commenting. You know, because I, I sometimes will miss those messages. 
And some people just feel so bad that I didn't get to their message, and I, I hate that, you know? Deborah says, I just love your laugh. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> I want her waterfall. Derek, did you ever check on, uh, what, what did we say? Uh, I, I don't know why I wanted to say Spotify. My goodness. Loaded mashed potatoes with what to cheese and bacon. <laughs> it's not on Spotify. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't think of it right now. Makes you want to change the menu today. Uh-huh. Hey, why not? Why not? I missed your message. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, your name is Starlet. Hello, Starlet. Welcome in. Thank you for coming in and joining us. Let's see, somebody says, how about a broccoli? What, what is that? Let me see. Wayfair, that's what I wanted to say. Shirley Clark, how are you? I felt like I heard the dogs, but I know they ain't up here. I uh, uh, have ever been to Bucky's. I have not. I've heard of it, but I have not. <laughs> My holy king. Yeah, I know that song. Broccoli for <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Is it a joke about broccoli or you said broccoli poor boy? <laughs> what are y'all talking about? <laughs> I'm yeah, Alan, I am ready for the spring. I totally love. The springtime, in the summertime. Remember I told y'all my daffodils are coming up? They're coming up in the ground. And I don't feel so bad because I looked across the street. I could see from my office. I said, oh, their daffodils is coming up. So mine's ain't coming up too early. <laughs> so I, I'm not freaking out. At first, when I, start, when I started seeing them come up, I thought, it's too early. But I'm seeing everybody's is coming up early. It might be global warming. Maybe they used to didn't come up that early, you know? I love the warm weather. Yes, I do. It is. It's a water cooler. Um, let's see if y'all can see it. There it is there. And it has a five-gallon um, water tank in there, and it puts out purified uh, what, what type of water is it called? Um, filtered water. Just a way of drinking fresh water, you know? It, okay, it's a joy. Let me see. Nadine, it's a joy watching and cooking with you. I'll be making this for dinner tomorrow, okay? Miss Karen said, I saw a dandelion the other day. Are you serious? A dandelion in the yard already? Oh my goodness. Wow. It, it's, it's, it's global warming. <laughs> Daffodils. You need to move down south then, Gina, says Shay. <laughs> we should get one of the water systems. Oh my goodness, being poisoned. I heard about that. I heard about that. <clears throat> and my dad was telling me, y'all know my dad is in Ohio. And he said that he was getting water. He was purchasing water out the yin-yang, every store that he could purchase it from. He said he's not drinking the water or the ice that comes from his refrigerator. He said... Um, if he's cooking, he's cooking using bottled water. He said if he's making coffee, he's using bottled water. If he's making ice, he's using bottled water. Yes, so that's scary. I heard on the news about those people. 
Well, Gina, I checked on the indoor waterfalls at Amazon. They started at $1,000, and you can't afford it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It is scary. Yeah, I, yes, yes, yes. He said, you don't blame me. Mm-hmm. He is smart to do that. Yeah, he told me. He said they were heading out to every store that they could to get water. Hey, listen, I want to check on my chicken, okay? So now, if you cook with me, let's go ahead, check on it. It's, it's the perfect time. You can use whatever utensil. Don't use nothing, you know, um, uh, plastic. Don't use anything plastic. Stir it around if you want. Make sure it's not sticking. But just take a visual look at it. It should begin to, your chicken should be floating now. And it should start to be getting a, a gorgeous crush. Uh, it should be, um, have that crispy texture look to it. When I have the perfect color, I'll bring y'all with me and we, we can look at it together. But I'm going to go check on it right now. Be right back. I want you to get that up too. Woo, that chicken look good, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. Moving in the right direction. Get that flower off the floor. <clears throat> I'm going to take the microphone off while I'm right here. Okay, you should be able to still hear me. Um, okay, so let me tell you what my chicken is looking like right now. And we'll walk over and look at it together here in a second. One of the pans is... I'm going to give it about two, two, three more minutes, and I'm taking that chicken out because it's done. How will I know if my chicken is done, Gina? Well, you're going to get that beautiful, perfect golden brown color. But what I always like to suggest um, is using a thermometer, thermometer, 165 degrees internal temperature. So when your internal thermometer reads 165, chicken is perfectly done. Okay. Ooh, we says such. Have you ever cooked with spaghetti squash? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. It's beautiful. It's delicious. I love all the different types of uh, squashes. Gina, you snatch. Let me see. Gina, your snatch back looking good. Oh, okay. I know you can't wait for the summer. I can't. I can't wait for the summer. I'm excited. Thank you. With a thermometer, don't hit the bone, says Ron. Absolutely, he makes a great point. If you hit that bone when you're taking the temperature of something, you're going to get the wrong reading. So you got to go through the meaty part, okay? The meaty part, okay? And you also don't want to go outside of the meat like this. You also don't want to go outside of the meat because you'll get the wrong reading as well. What happened? Huh? You got to be careful. You see, you see how you push that down like that? Be careful. I tell you every day, don't do that, okay? Please. Okay? If you know, if, let's see, this person says, if so, how did you make the spaghetti squash? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Let's go check on the chicken real quick. Let's check on it together real quick. I'll flip that camera over. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get over there because I need to take this chicken out. Okay, see how this one is? Scoot over. See how this one is darker? Scoot back. I'm taking this one out. Perfectly done. I got some great color. Okay. Scoot back. And then the other one is, is light. So I'm going to let that one still cook a little bit. But look at this. We got some amazing color. It's going to be crispy and gorgeous. Ooh -wee. Chicken time. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon on my chicken. I am. I am. All right. I also like hot sauce on my chicken, you know. Okay, come over this way and I want to show you the difference. 
You see how that has that perfect color? But then if we look at this one, it's still light. That's a little too light for me. So we want to keep on cooking it, you know, until it gets a little darker. Like I said, always check your chicken, 165 internal temperature. Beautiful. Okay, let's go sit back down, and this will be done when we come back. beautiful thank you Alyssa okay that is 100 of tips you have taught me through the years absolutely absolutely thank you so now you said uh, the person said so how would you make your spaghetti squash let me tell you I take the spaghetti squash don't peel it slice it down the middle and then you open it up and you got two halves okay Check me out. Season that baby. I would season mine's salt and pepper. A little bit of dried parsley flakes. I'm going to put it on a baking sheet. I'm going to bake it in the oven. 350 degrees until it gets beautiful. You should be able to take a fork and kind of scrape up what looks like spaghetti. And it really does. It looks like spaghetti, it tastes like squash, and it is absolutely amazing. Okay, Gina, so do I eat it like that? Absolutely you can eat it like that. Or you could turn around and put a tomato sauce. <laughs> Check me out. You could put a tomato sauce. You could scrape all of the spag uh, spaghetti noodles out of the spaghetti squash. Put it on a plate and then pour tomato sauce on top of it and eat it that way and you will not be let down. You'll be so happy that you tried spaghetti squash. Really, how will I know when it's done? Well, you'll be able to uh, taste a little piece. You'll know when it's done. And like I said, you'll be able to scrape it with a fork like this. And once those little shreds of spaghetti comes off, it looks like spaghetti, it's done. I love yellow squash. I love zucchini as well. Brown sugar and cinnamon on spaghetti squash. I, I, I haven't put that on spaghetti squash, but I have put it on the butternut squash, and it is absolutely beautiful. The butternut squash is my favorite. But, well, I don't know. The yellow squash and the butternut squash is my two favorites. Okay, Sonia says, check on y'all's chicken. Where's the puppies and how are they? They are in the basement with my husband and they're doing just fine. They are doing absolutely amazing. Okay, what did you say, Happy? You said you burnt yourself? Let me have that. Oh, did you say spaghetti squash casserole? Squash casserole, oh. Um, I believe, don't quote me, I think I have a recipe for squash casserole. I don't know. I feel like I put breadcrumbs on the top or something. What, what are you needing? For what? No. Saj, you got to try. Squash is good. It is. Oh, Saj. You have the yellow squash. See, Valencia says yellow squash is my favorite. Get, listen, Saj, get you the yellow squash. It's like shaped like this, right? And you're just going to slice it into medallions about this thick. Put salt and pepper on it. Fry it in a little bit of butter. Listen, you don't know what you're missing. 
fry it in a little bit of butter. I'm so serious when I say this. You're gonna, the squash is gonna get like a charred color on both sides, golden brown kind of charred on both sides. When you taste it, it's gonna taste like heaven. Squash is amazing. Yeah, not white sugar, brown sugar. Gina, how is the fishes? Oh, they're doing great. They are fine. You want to go over there and see the fish? Um, remember, we, ha we have one in the basement. I'm not going to take y'all in the basement. But um, I will show y'all this fish tank real quick. You about to put KFC out of business? Well, I, I, I don't know. Let's look at the fish real quick. It's raining. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's, let's go over. We're going to check on the fish. All right, and then we're going to check on the rest of our chicken. Okay, let's flip this baby over. It's a lot of fish. <laughs> if she can change my mind on the bread pudding. <laughs> Look how pretty they are. And, and you know what? These fish are so... Hold on, stop the comments for a second and y'all can see the fish tank. If you stop the comments for a second, I'm going to come in real close. It is a lot of fish, right? And they are spoiled rotten. See, they're so close to the camera right now because they think it's time to eat. Little stinkers. Look at that one down there. Pretty, ain't he? Look, I'm going to try to get you all a really close up at all of the beautiful colors that's in here. Look at that one. Let's see. There's one there, look at him hiding out. Little stinker. <laughs> but they're doing fine, there's little scuba divers in there. Look at that one taking a picture. <laughs> yes, the fish are always doing well. <laughs> uh, I love the fish tank. All right, let's check on let's check on the chicken. Got to check the chicken. Ooh. All right, time to take chicken out. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh wee. Gorgeous chicken here. How easy was this meal today? Somebody say Amen and yes, Lord, for the chicken. Ooh wee. Mm -mm. All right, I'm going to turn this burner off right now. That's a whole mess of chicken. <laughs> All right, can you take that back over that way, please? So now before biting down into this, we got to let it cool down a little bit. Have to let it cool down. Gorgeous. Let's bring the mashed potatoes back into the equation. We got broccoli and dinner it's pretty much served. I do want to stir around my broccoli a little bit to get that chicken powder moved around. We got like a beautiful butter sauce down in here. Is this still hot? Yeah, that's, that's kind of hot. Oh, they are beautiful, Gina. Thank you, Mildred. Golden brown and crispy, absolutely, Karen. I like to dip my broccoli in ranch. Oh, is that right? Okay, so you're dipping, are you turning that on? Okay. You're dipping your uh, fresh broccoli in ranch or your cooked broccoli? Because if it's cooked broccoli, I think that's really interesting. <laughs> I'm just putting my microphone on if anybody's wondering what I'm doing here. Hello, Rosa. How are you? Anthony is a troll. Okay, let's see if we can find him. Thank you, uh, Drew. Absolutely. Hold on, guys. Mm. 
What, okay, which Anthony, which Anthony is a troll? Okay, you got him. Thank you, Ron, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Ron is quick, he quick with it. He said, okay. Got him. Got him. All right, so now I'm going to wash my hands. I want to get the hot sauce out. I want some lemon. Lemon for me today. I love lemon squeezed on fish. I love lemon squeezed on chicken. Can the camera please come in and show everyone what we have here? A little bit of lemon there. Look at that. I'll get the hot sauce out for Saj. Saj likes hot sauce on the chicken. Look at this, everybody. Is that gorgeous? Is that what you're looking for? Uh-huh. Oh, better make you some. And the potatoes, oh my goodness, uh-huh. <laughs> How many of y'all want to pray? How many of y'all want to pray right now? Are you ready to eat? I, I would like to know if you cooked with me today. You see a fish dinner coming up. <laughs> I would like to know if you cooked with me today, how did you do? Did you do well? Did you do okay? I'd love to know. I'd love to know. Tell me how you did. How you doing? <laughs> no trolls on fried chicken day. We bind the trolls away from us. In the name of Jesus, absolutely we do. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray. My chicken was a little overcooked, but it looks good. Okay, that's great. You know, a little overcooked is okay because, um, you know, you can just learn next time to really keep an eye on it. It's definitely okay, and it's going to taste good anyways. Okay, Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for your mercy, your love, time, and your understanding. Please, Lord Jesus, give us a peace of mind. No weapons formed against any of us shall prosper. We bind the devil away from us on a daily basis. Devil, you have no authority. Heavenly Father, thank you for every single person in this chat. And thank you for everyone that will come into this chat. I pray that you bless over their lives and keep them safe. I pray that no weapons formed against them shall prosper. We bind the devil away from their lives in Jesus Christ's name. Please fill them with happiness, peace, and abundance and favor. They will have favor upon them in Jesus Christ's name. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us come together today and have a good time and make a good meal and eat together. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. Thank you for your lessons and your blessings. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yum, yum. Amen. I don't eat broccoli, greens, cabbage. You hold on. This person says, I don't eat broccoli, greens, cabbage, zucchini, or green beans, or squash. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, if you did not put um, cheese on your broccoli, and you think about it, and you say, I I think I want cheese on it. Take some cheese and heat it up over top of your broccoli and you can enjoy it that way. I'm going to make a plate. I'm coming right around and we're going to sit and chit chat and have a good time and eat. Let's make plates. Let's make a good plate, y'all. I mean, let's see. I think I want this plate. I want that plate. Okay, okay, I know, Gina, but you're not supposed to be doing the carbs. I know. <laughs> I, I, you don't have to remind me. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do just a little bit just because. I'll blame it on you all because y'all want to see me eat the potatoes, right? <laughs> I know you do. Broccoli. That broccoli is gorgeous, right? 
I think I want a little bit more broccoli. And the chicken. I'm not going to heat the chicken up, okay? The chicken's nice and hot. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit of butter on my potatoes and a little bit of cheese on my broccoli. Get your drinks, your paper towels, and anything you need because we're getting ready to sit down and chit chat and eat and have a good time together. Can you grab the hot sauce for me, please? I got my paper towel and my fork. Okay, I want to heat my vegetables up. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a piece of Kraft Singles and put it right over top of my broccoli. So let's get our vegetables heated up. I hope y'all had a good time cooking today with Dina Young. I can hear the dogs barking. They are so funny. The reason why I say that they're funny is because they know when the food is done. They're barking. They totally know what's happening right now. They know that I'm done cooking. <laughs> They know that I'm cooking chicken, too. That's how smart they are. <laughs> Christopher says, oh, let me fix my plate, too. Crazy Chicks, how are you? Yes, the puppies know. They're so fun. They're so funny. Huh? He, he can make it. Huh? What's he doing? Okay, well tell him that I'm still recording. They hear the microwave. <laughs> I bet they do. And that's probably it. They hear the microwave. All right, a little bit of butter on top of my potatoes. Mm. Just a little bit of butter. We put a nice amount of butter, but I always like a little extra. You know? <clears throat> you have to wash your hands, okay? You, what does he want? Is that all that he wants? Okay, you need to wash your hands. All right, guys, let me grab the chicken that I want. You know he likes these pieces, right? Okay, oh my goodness, uh-huh. Go ahead, here. Is that all? He doesn't want the rest of the meal right now? He just wants chicken right now? Okay. That's fine. Let's see. He want hot sauce? Here, here. All right, everybody. Gina's chickens and finger, his finger looking good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, Popeye's Chicken. Gina, UPS is knocking at the door to pick up my plate. <laughs> I swear, I know. I swear, I know my, I know my neighbors can smell this food. I, I totally know that they can. I, want, I always wonder what they're thinking. Like, dang, it always smells good over there. I, I know that they're always thinking that without knowing, you know? Because you can smell food cooking. You can. You can smell people's food cooking. Here, plug this up. All right. So I'll put a little bit of hot sauce on the plate just in case I want to dipity, dipity, dip, 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 dip. Turn that away from my face because it's too bright. Look at this. All right, stop the messages real quick. Hold on, let's see if I can get, my plate is hot. Look at this. Yummers, says Crazy Chick. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that tad of butter in the potatoes. Ah, uh -huh. I, I didn't come to play. I came to show you all how to make an easy, peasy, delicious, crunchy, juicy, crispy, seasoned fried chicken, and this is how it's done. You hear me? I'm going to come closer so you can see. Mm. Okay. 
So now I like lemon. I know it may be nuts. It may be the nuts. When I found out that um, some Asian people like to put lemon on chicken, I thought, genius. That's when I thought, that is genius. Yes, I'm a flat person. I love, love, love the flats. The flats is what, what I'm into. You got the big pieces? No? Okay. Flats, yeah, I don't want you eating all the um, flats because that's what I like, Dakota. Look, 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 look. Is it crisp? Somebody tell me it's crispy. Mm. All right. Gina, just bite it. Okay, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Ron Wilson, oh my goodness, you about to slap yourself when you taste this chicken. Oh! He said, mine's is crispy. I know it is. That, that right there, that's for Saj. Look at the hot sauce. Oh, them flats is calling your name. Mmm. <laughs> Listen. When I'm coming on, when I'm coming on this live, making a recipe like this, y'all might want to think about making it with me. I'm going to always make sure I wait on you all. I'm going to also make sure that I'm teaching in detail. <laughs> Your seed life says you're teasing us, Nina. I'm going to make sure I'm teaching in detail so people can understand what we are doing, okay? <clears throat> Look at that. Oh, hot dog. Oh! He said that broccoli, Lord have mercy, so tender. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How about it, Ron? How about it? The broccoli and the mashed potatoes itself is so stinking good. And everything that Gina Young makes on these lives, no matter what I'm making, I've always got a trick up my sleeve to make it taste even more delicious. I always have an amazing plan for you all so you can enjoy your food. So, if you're cooking along with me, you will not be disappointed. You hear me? You hear me? Oh. Look at the cheese on the broth. <laughs> yes. Mm. Drag it through the hot sauce. Uh-uh, I ain't playing. Mmm. Okay, you said you have to try to make the broccoli. Where did you get the rim plates from? My husband, I, I feel like my husband purchased them from Kroger's. <laughs> Don't quote me on that, but I feel like I'm like a, a like 95% that that's where he found those plates from. Let's see. It got to be good. That troll is watching. I appreciate you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Oh, listen, I appreciate you all. I absolutely do. Mm-mm-mm. mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. Listen, when the meat is white, you know your chicken is done. And when that bone is kind of brown, I'm going to show you. You see that brown bone? You know that the chicken is done. That's what we're looking for. That baby was good. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's how you clean a chicken bone. You ever ate chicken with somebody and they don't clean the chicken bone? Does it drive you nuts? Does it make you want to go nuts when they don't? <laughs> the 
Latika said, I'm on my way. <laughs> it cracks me up when she says that. You, it cracks me up. So I decided I'm going to drag my chicken through the mat. Mm, mm, mm. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Drag the chicken through the mashed potatoes. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. My goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Broccoli. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you said you're going to go back and look at the whole thing, huh? <laughs> Sonia. Sonia says, see, I would have no bones left. <laughs> there is. It drives you crazy when they leave the meat on, I know. Try your broccoli. And potatoes together. Okay. Okay. Broccoli and the potatoes together. And I just dragged some of that butter that was on the potatoes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. A little bit of hot sauce. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Crazy chicks are saying yes. <laughs> he said, We're eating good in the neighborhood today. Let me see what this person says. Hold on. She said she had a friend that used to eat the bones. You don't have fried chicken, but you're eating curry goat and rice and peas. Oh, Miss Bradley. Oh, my goodness. That sounds good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. He's doing okay. Uh, what Ron Wilson says, hope you're doing okay today. Ron Wilson. Oh, <laughs> he said, thank you. He's doing pretty good. He's driving me nuts today. But he's doing okay. He's doing okay. He's smiling now. Driving me up the wall. <laughs> mm. Y'all. If you never ever had lemon on chicken, try it. Oh, when I tell you to try this, it's like some next level stuff. Mm. Let me see what this person says. Samuel, how you doing today? Oh, you like the honey fried chicken? Chanel Washington says, Gina, I got to make me some. <laughs> Nicole, you've had it. Okay. She said, lemon on chicken is amazing. <laughs> A little bit said that fried chicken is calling her name. Mm. Y'all. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm, 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 mm. Dad, goodness, this is good. Okay, so most definitely, or definitely watching the replay to make this. There's more over there. Gina, I love how you enjoy your food. Thank you so much. And I feel like when anybody cooks, I want you to enjoy your food, you know? 
I want your food to be just that delicious to where when you cook it, you say, no, I didn't. Like, I didn't just make this, did I, right? Like, I really didn't make this because it's unbelievable. I aim for a wow factor when I'm cooking. I used to eat ranch. I missed that. Samuel said something. You know, everybody, I need to go check back with you when I go live. When you go live again, okay, Mildred, thank you for coming in. Geneve says, "Oh, you got the frozen broccoli? That's okay. I promise, it's okay." Uh, next time, you can show us how to make neck bones. Okay. Now, the here when it comes to the um, neck bones, they take a while to cook. So the thing about that. I told you I'll kind of steer away from things like neck bones and oxtails because they take a while to cook. But the thing is, if y'all don't mind sitting and waiting with me while it cooks, I, I could cook it for y'all. You know, but I feel like most people don't want to wait that long for the food to cook. You know what I mean? So... That's why I steer away from oxtails and neck bones because it takes forever and a day to cook. Yes, they're delicious. But I also know that people nowadays, they want a quick meal. They want a meal that doesn't cost a lot and they want the meal to be easy. Now, a meal like oxtails or neck bones, it's not going to be as easy. But we can do it. But are you going to have the patience to wait on it to get done? You know. Chicken wings and drumsticks dipped in clover honey from Texas is most delicious. And you said, try it. It's a game changer. Okay. So I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm going to test you out right now because I'm going to try it. So let me show y'all what I did with my potatoes. I didn't eat a lot. Like I said, I have to know my, what I can have and what I can't have and what I shouldn't have. You, you know what I mean? So you can see, hold on, the mashed potatoes that I'm going to leave. I had just enough to be satisfied with the mashed potatoes, you know? But when it comes to the rest of those mashed potatoes, I don't need it, so I'm not gonna eat it. You know, it's not good for me, right? Was it delicious? Absolutely it was. Give me a paper towel, please. It was delicious, but I can replace it with, you know, the chicken and the broccoli, because I gotta know my limits. I'm going to taste the chicken right now with the honey, and I'm going to test you. Hold on. You stay right there. You just stay right there. Don't you go nowhere. Okay. We're going to try. I got the honey. Look at the big bottle of honey. Let's take the microphone off because we don't need the microphone anymore. Nope, we don't need the microphone. Let's get it off. Plug this in. What are you working on? What are you working on? No, you can turn that off. Plug this in. Turn that off. Okay, you love turmeric. Turmeric is very, very healthy for you. Uh, if you all never used it, turmeric is very, very healthy. Now, it has a really interesting flavor, right? Let's see. Okay. So, you mean for me, okay, to put the honey on the chicken. Okay. And you want me to taste this, right? Mm. 
Now this honey, this is a 100% pure Midwest, raw and unfiltered honey, okay? This is a raw honey, okay? I, do y'all see it? <laughs> that honey is dripping. Does that look good? <laughs> All right, let's try it. about it first. Hold on. I know everybody's waiting in anticipation to see what I'm going to say. Hold on. Let me taste it. Let me drag it through the honey that fell on the plate. Okay, let me see. <laughs> yeah, honey. Honey will not go bad. Listen. I didn't eat the potatoes. Mm. I like the honey. I like the honey. I like the honey on the chicken. So I can actually say yes to you. I like the chicken. Mm. I like the honey on the chicken. Mm. Mm. I do. Kind of makes me think of how sometimes you have a biscuit with the honey and then you're eating chicken on the side of that I do like it but if I had to choose between the hot sauce the lemon and the honey I'm gonna choose that lemon that lemon is what I'm looking for oh I love the lemon on the honey not the lemon on the honey. I love the lemon on the chicken. Oh, hot sauce would be your favorite. Okay. Oh, you would do the lemon. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Gina, you turned me out with this meat. <laughs> with this meal. Okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that is great. Thank you for trying it. Oh, you're welcome. It's definitely something that I would do again. Oh, yeah. It's seasoned so well. Got that chicken powder in there that you like? Mm hmm Biscuits on the side, uh-huh. People love biscuits on the side of um, chicken. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. And I'm so glad, I am so glad that y'all that cook with me is enjoying this meal. I feel good. I just dragged this through the honey and the hot sauce. And it has lemon on it. And it's good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said you're like, where is the biscuit? <laughs> you tried the honey and the lemon. Okay. Which one did you like? You check the menu. You had catfish fries today. Oh, catfish and fries today.
Mm-hmm. Mm. Thank you, Shay. Thank you for coming in and joining. Order some clover honey from Texas. Okay. You're going to try both, the honey and the lemon. Okay. You said you're done. You're done. Okay. Mm. Yo, I think I tried to eat that. I tried to bite that bone off. Put some uh, cheese on that broccoli if you want to. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. I'm done. Hey, Mr. Young. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> they say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's what they said. They're all saying hello. You said hello to everybody. You had catfish last night. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, -ay. well, I fed the babies. They ate a good meal earlier. Let's see. Somebody says, Gina, can you sing your song? Gina, can you sing your song this by Jill Scott? Heck no. Heck no. You hear that? What? They want me to sing my song by Jill Scott. <laughs> Sing your song by Jill Scott. <laughs> her daddy can make her sing, y'all. <laughs> he said, My dad can make me sing, y'all. He can. He can. He can make her sing. If my dad was in this chat right now and he told me to sing, I'd be singing. <laughs> I always tell my husband um, the stories about when I was younger and we would travel back and forth to Philadelphia. And um, you can actually put them in a cage too. Dakota, get up. Um, so we would be traveling and we would be driving. And it would take us nine hours to get, to get there. And my, we, my dad had a cassette player in his car, you know. Thanks, You're welcome. Enjoy it. And he would be playing Patti LaBelle, Regina Bell, Stephanie Mills. He'd be playing um, uh, Anita Baker, uh, Whitney Houston, all those songs, right? And my, my dad, this is what my husband says, and I totally agree now. My husband says, your dad was your biggest fan. You know, he's like, that's how a dad is supposed to be. Because I told him, my dad would be, sing he would be like, okay, this is what my dad would say to me. <laughs> and I would be sitting in the back of the car so I could like sprawl my legs out, you know, and relax with my pillow while we got this long ride while my dad's driving. I'd be in the back. And he'd be like, okay, we're going to turn this song on by Regina Bell or Stephanie Mills. And he would tell me, he would say, okay, see, you have a voice like Regina Bell or Stephanie Mills. He's like, when it comes to Whitney Houston, you don't sing, you're not going to be able to sing like her. <laughs> That's what he would tell me. You don't sing like Whitney Houston, but you definitely have Regina Bell and Stephanie Mills in you, right? And I would be singing their songs and he would rewind it and play it over. And I would be singing nine hours straight going to Philadelphia. And I just had the time of my life singing to my dad. And he loved every note that came out of my mouth. My dad was like, there you go, right? And he would rewind the song. <laughs> he would rewind the song and I play it over and I'd sing it again or he would critique me on something like, he's like, you see when she yodels like that at this part, that's what I need you to do, right? And he was, he was just my biggest fan when it came to singing. <laughs> so I like to tell that story. Mm. You said people know it is a beautiful memory. 
You said people know nothing about good, good singing nowadays, right? I totally agree with you. And Gina, do a little yodel for us right now. Heck no. <laughs> I ain't doing it. <laughs> and then, uh, my, I, I just have to say, I have and had. My dad's still alive. I had the best dad ever. And that's what I always like to say. My dad, absolutely amazing. So at one point in time, I was in softball. I wasn't really interested in softball, but I've always been like athletic, right? My dad took me over to the schoolyard one time. And, oh, in high school, I think I was in the ninth grade, I decided that I wanted to get on the softball team. I played softball for a little while, and my dad went and bought some gloves, baseball gloves, and the baseball, and we would practice, you know, throwing the ball, catching the ball, scooping the ball up, and my dad used to love when he would, he would throw the ball, he told me he wants the ball to hit the ground, and then he wants to see me scoop the ball up and then toss it back to him, right? And he was like, see, that's it. I love, I love, my dad, my dad was something else. He would say, see, that's it. I love the way you scooped that ball up, and right away I had that ball in my hand, right? <laughs> I told my husband, my husband just laughs because he knows how my dad is with me. <laughs> And those are some of the greatest memories ever. My dad was just like, he was my biggest fan when it came to supporting me in pretty much anything. <laughs> Gina, show a picture of your dad. Let me see. Let me, so encouraging. I think that may be the word. Okay, let me look on my, let me look on my photos. Hold on, I think it might take me a while to find it because this is a photo from about, heck, I don't know, uh, maybe four years ago. I think I'm in the picture too. My dad is out of town now. Remember I told y'all I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and my dad is still there. I moved out of town, so I am not there anymore. So, let me see. Let's see, let's get down to the photos. I think I have a picture, and you're gonna see some resemblance, but on the other, but. You'll, you'll see resemblance, resemblance, is that how you say it? But also I have some traits from my mom too. <clears throat> Let's see. My dad said, can we brighten it up a little bit? Sure. My dad said when I was born, wipe the screen off so they can see it. Dakota just gave a big picture. Um, on, on the computer so y'all can see it. What the heck was I getting ready to say? Oh, my dad told me when I was born, I'm going to tell y'all about when I was born. My dad told me that I was so little, he could hold me in the palm of his hand like this, and my legs would hang down right here. That's how little I was. I was five pounds. He said my head would be right here at the tip of his finger. And my legs would hang down right there. He said, that's how little I was. <laughs> that's what he said. So let me tell you what happened when I was being born. Okay, here, here's the picture. Here's the picture. It's four years ago. Can we brighten the picture up? Heck. Is that all the brightness we could do? Okay, let me see. Can y'all see? Can y'all see? That's my dad, guys. <laughs> That's a picture. I ain't even got no makeup on in that picture. And I didn't have my teeth straightened either. Um, but that is my dad. Uh, oh, okay. So my mom was having me. 
And uh, her mom, my mom's mom was there. My siblings were there, and of course they were little. They were waiting in the reception. What, what do you call it? The waiting area. And of course my dad was there. And so this is the story. Something happened to where they came to my dad. And they said, okay, you have to make a decision. One of them's going to have to pass. Do you want your wife to go? Or do you want the baby to go? And my dad said, save the baby. Right? And that baby, of course, was me. Somehow they were able to keep her alive. So neither one of us passed. But he did have to make that decision. Okay? So um, after she had me, she was crying, crying, crying. Her mom came in, which was my grandma Seward, the one that made the yeast rolls, <laughs> the dinner yeast rolls. Not, not Lucille, not, not my dad's mom, but uh, my mom's mom. She comes in and sees my mom crying, and my grandma said, what, what's wrong? What? So what'd they do? What happened? And my mom said, she's so beautiful. And, and my mom said, my grandma wanted to smack the crap out of her. Like, you scared me. I guess I was under the blanket. And my grandma didn't know I was under the blanket. <laughs> but the news had actually came on that day and gave my mom a red rose um, that day. So there was like she she they gave her a red rose that day <laughs> so so that's the story yeah yep 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 nobody but god absolutely uh thank you valencia i think you look like your dad i love that's the only picture i have of me and my dad together i mean i'm pretty sure well i have there's pictures somewhere of my dad holding me. I told y'all I didn't have no hair. Um, but just a little poof ball at the top. Where he got um, a afro. And uh, he got like the butterfly collar on. And the bell bottoms. And he's holding me. <laughs> and then there's another picture where we're in the backyard. I'm standing up. Look like I had just begun to walk. And he's got like overalls on. I got overalls on and he's standing and I'm looking up at him. Thanks for sharing the picture. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> you really do look like your dad. <laughs> I, I have a picture of my mom. But the picture that I have of my mom is when she was in the hospital. And I don't know if y'all should see that picture. So I'm not going to share that one. Help me out, Sister Debbie. What? Okay, what do you need help with? Thank you for sharing the story. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome. No problem. Uh, actually, I like sharing, um, I like sharing different stories and stuff. Y'all remember, uh, when I went live, um, the other day I made the cabbage and I was talking about the nickname that my dad called me, which is, uh, Nina and, um, uh, uh, Woodstock. And then I told y'all also, I also told y'all the story that my mom would call me the queen bee. And my sister would say, she, she ain't no queen. Quit calling her that. <laughs> she ain't no, why you call her that? <laughs> but I love when my dad called me uh, Nina and also Woodstock. A 
<laughs> You're an excellent storyteller. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Chaser says, Gina, I was my dad's girl also. <laughs> I used to love sitting there w listening to my dad tell a story or my grandma. When I say grandma, I'm talking about my dad's mom. I used, I used to love to listen to people tell stories about their life and something that happened in their life and stuff like that. Oh, Gina, if you did voice let, let me see what, what, he, what he says. Handsome dad, thank you. Gina should do voice acting. Uh, you would do well. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day I can get my dad down here. And uh, we could possibly do a video together. I don't know how that would go. I think it would be totally nuts. I think it would be great to do. Yeah. Huh? That's my grandma. Let me see it. <clears throat> That's her mom. <laughs> Yep, that's her mom. And then, let me see, hold on. And then that's my mom. Let me see. Make it bigger. Yeah, but since she's in the hospital bed, let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, you said really you would, though. <laughs> Thank you. You finally called a live. Now you have to lock in the replay. I think I missed everything. Hi, Gina and everyone. Nadine, thank you for coming in. Listen, it's never too late. When you come in, uh, come in whenever. You know, and if you're not cooking with me, it don't matter what time you come in. Just give a thumbs up on the way in. And... Um, just give a thumbs up on the way in, and uh, you can always watch the replay. Now, let's talk about something really important. Um, on the replay, let's just say I get off of this live, and this, of course, this is going to replay. Right away, the comments aren't going to come up in the comment section. It takes YouTube at least an hour maybe sometimes a little more for those comments to be posted back up there. So if you're a person that would like to watch the live and look at the replay comments, gotta wait a couple hours for it to come on there, okay? Let me say what you did. What am I going to do for Easter? I don't know, but I'm definitely making some, some deviled eggs and some boiled eggs for Easter and a nice, beautiful ham. Gina rocks. Yummy. Thank you, Big Frank. Hey, thank you for coming in. I haven't seen a message from you in a long time. Thank you for coming in and joining us. <laughs> Where did Susie Q go? Is she still here, says Derek? I'm gonna cook with you too. Oh, you do? How many siblings do you have? Gee, I I'm just enjoying listening. Oh, Deborah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Lemon potato salad for Easter. Oh, Ron, you, you talk about that all the time. And I totally feel like that potato salad is a, it's it's so delicious. If you're a person that likes lemon, right, Ron? If you're a person that likes lemon, you will love that potato salad because it's beautiful, right? It's like a symphony being played on your taste buds, right? Let me see. Oh, okay. 
Well, keep it this way. Where has Miss Pooh been? Miss Pooh is not a moderator anymore, but she's more than welcome to come onto the channel. So I don't know where, where she's been. Or I don't know how she's doing, you know? Ah, uh, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Jax, 1108. Gina, I made your nachos yesterday and those baked beans. You took the meat to another level. Absolutely. Thank you. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. And I like when you let the people in the chat know. You know, because uh, Derek Eads was saying yesterday, or was he the other day when we had um, uh, cabbage, he was saying that he made this casserole, Dorito casserole. And someone was just asking about the Dorito casserole. So when you all come in the chat saying, hey, I made your so-and-so, people are seeing that message and they want to go make it too. Gina, I remember you made the lemon potato salad. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay. Alan, how you doing? Yes, I was so, yes, it was so good. How did the chicken turn out? I had to leave. The chicken turned out beautiful. Oh, so somebody said, um, how many siblings? So I, okay, so I have a sister, and then I have three brothers. I was the baby for a long time, um, but now I'm not the baby anymore because um, my dad had, uh, my little brother, my little brother, I'd like to say my little brother is 20, Maybe 22. Maybe 22, I'd like to say. Yes, sister is older than me. Uh-huh. Jill Scott is her twin. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Chicks is laughing at that one like, okay, because it was a good one. <laughs> Hi, Xander, how you doing? All right. I'm leaving. I have, let's see. Okay, all right. I have to sing my song tomorrow early in the morning, but I'm going to do my podcast tonight and be uploading so everyone can check it out. What is he saying? How do you donate to the channel, says Laura. Well, Laura, um, if you're looking at your device, if you're looking at your device, you'll see a money symbol at the bottom on the right. You click that money symbol, and then it takes you directly to where you need to go so you can donate. Um, I can show you if you don't see how to do it. Let me see, let me see. I'm gonna go to my channel for you. If you're on Gina's Young channel, this is my channel, of course, right? I'm going to click on that live that you all are on right now. Okay, let's pass the commercial first. Let's skip the commercial. All right. So, right here, where the chat is going, that's a money symbol right there. You click it. And right here, it tells you to do a super chat. You press on super chat, you slide that bar over to how much you'd like to pay, and then you press buy and send. And from there, it literally tells you everything that you need to do. And it's quick and simple. Oh, you do, you have five sisters and a brother, okay. 
You can't see how on your phone, you're on your phone. Okay. Oh, I don't, I'm not a fan of the Cowboys. Christopher, I'm not a fan of the Cowboys. Not a fan of the Cowboys. We're not Cowboy fans over here. Hold on, guys. Let me see. Okay, let me make sure. Dun, 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 dun. Latika just said something. I missed it. Oh my goodness. Mine came up. What do you mean? Uh, Miss Bradley says Patriots all day. <laughs> you knew the Chiefs would win. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, you love Prince and Polo. Okay, that's great. What happened? You don't show them the No. I'm going to make the shamrock shake. Everybody keeps asking, and I'm going to make it. Uh, I'm making it. Oh, big red chiefs. Okay. You're born in Ireland. Okay. Oh, that's great. What's the best Whitney Houston song, Gina? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to look it up real quick. Hold on. Because I can't just think of it. Let me turn my volume all the way down so I don't go playing it. Oh, you said, my, you said the greatest love of all. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Is that what you think? Okay, people are saying I will always love you. Okay, let's see. Let me, let me think. Let me think. Let's see. Uh, I think I got one. Hold on, let's see. I like you give good love to me. Uh, okay, I like that one. I'm your baby tonight. I like that. And I also like I run to you or run to you. I really like that. Uh, all the man that I need, I really like that. <laughs> uh, let me see. There, there's a lot. There's a lot. Now, when it comes to Mariah Carey, let's see. I don't know if I even spell her name right. I don't even know if I spelled the last name right. Hold on. Didn't we almost have it all? Oh, that is a great one. I didn't even see that on here. Didn't we almost have it all? That's a good one. Now, listen. Mariah Carey can sing. Oh, my goodness. And I'm talking about when she was younger. Mm. She would let out beautiful notes when she sang. Mariah Carey, ooh we. Let me see. There's just 
just so many. I, I can't, I can't choose. And the thing is, I can't turn it on. If I could turn it on right now, I would just love that. Let's see. There's one song from Mariah Carey. I turn it on and I go nuts over it. What song is it? Oh, I like Mariah Carey, One Sweet Day, with Boys to Men. When she sings that song, I, th I think it's me singing that song. I imagine that I'm singing just like her. I try to hit every note. <laughs> I love that song. Vision of Love. Vision of Love by Mariah Carey is a really, really good one. You like clown? I don't know what clown is. What is clown? Oh, how about love takes time? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, are y'all with me? Oh, this is not plugged in. All right. How about Love Takes Time? Remember that? By Mariah Carey. <laughs> Listen here. That song right there is nuts. You said let us hear. <laughs> so they did. Thank you for the donation. Your name is, let me see. Laura Hope. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Hope. You said thank you. Um, for today, don't forget the clover honey with drumsticks and a touch of chili flakes if you want to. Much love, Gina. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I just might have to break down and get me some clover honey <laughs> so I can really have the whole experience, you know, because this is not clover honey. So thank you. Thank you for that super chat. Absolutely. Okay. Ah, you said my, okay. I just bit my, I just bit my lip on that one. Ow. <laughs> Dang God, I just bit my lip when I read that message. So this person says, I, I, I'm assuming you're talking about Mariah Carey and you say she was no Whitney Houston. i tell you what. She could hang with Whitney Houston. I just have to say that. They both could hang with each other. And when they did that song together, oh my God. What song did they do together? Let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see. Uh, hold on. The duet was legendary. Let me see. Uh... And Mariah Carey, oh, I can, and Mariah Carey sings. Okay, what was it? They sang, oh, they sang When You Believe. Yeah. When they sang, when they sang that song, they sang that song. And you could just see, they both were amazing. And if you sit here and ask me, I'm going to say both of them. I'm going to tell you I don't know who's the best because they both can sing. I mean, they, psh, listen, I can't choose. Ah, oh, they said Whitney Houston has a better voice. Okay, well, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Two legends and one song, Saj, yes. Oh, I like the song, I Don't Wanna Cry, uh, by Mariah Carey. Let me hear that. I'm gonna turn it up just a little, just a little so I can hear. Hold on, hold on. Come on. What is it? Oh, <laughs> oh! She sang that song, I Don't Wanna Cry. Oh my goodness, she said, when she says she don't want to cry, she's like, Dah! oh, 
Oh my gosh. Listen, Mariah, y'all, don't sleep on Mariah Carey. Don't do it. Whitney, look at the people in the crowd saying, okay, if you're Whitney, say Whitney. If you are Mariah Carey, say Mariah Carey. If you don't know, say I don't know. Because I'm the person that's saying I don't know. Because they both can say. I see a Whitney everywhere. Oh my gosh, a tie and both. Okay, okay, okay. Paula Abdul, that's a good one. Both. Okay, let me see what you said. Okay. <laughs> Your wife can sing, okay. <laughs> both back in the days, yeah. I just have to say both. That's all I can say. Gina Scott. Get out of here. <laughs> and the part when she said, uh, nothing in the world can take us back to where we used to be. When she sang that line. Ooh -wee. When she said, where? Where? It was like, <laughs> Ooh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Whitney is way better. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I'm not disagreeing. Don't think I'm disagreeing because I'm not. I'm just saying I don't know. I can't judge that. <laughs> she did. She did sing that song. I like Mariah, but... Okay, you said Angie says, I like Mariah, but I like Whitney, too. Let's see, Whitney. Let's see what you say. Whitney. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a great topic. That That is a great topic when you had such great people, you know? A blueberry milkshake? I never made a blueberry milkshake before. But I tell you what, it sounds pretty good. Can you close those curtains, please? Midnight Train. Oh, uh, Midnight Train in Georgia. Uh, who, guys, who's, it's right on the tip of my tongue. I don't know who the heck sang that song. Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Gladys, Gladys Knight. <laughs> Close that. <laughs> Y'all, I want I want some good old coffee. I want a nice cup of coffee, but is it too late? Is it too late for me? I told y'all about my husband and his coffee. He drank some coffee 5:30 in the evening. He drank some coffee 5.30 in the evening. I'm never going to forget this. It was only 5.30 in the evening. And he's one of those people that likes to say that coffee wakes him up. Coffee don't wake me up. I just like the taste of it, right? So he decided he was going to drink some coffee. And then he come waking me up at 4.30 in the morning talking about, guess what? And I said, I said, what? And he's going to say, I've been up ever since. I ain't been to sleep yet. I said, well, you better go to sleep. <laughs> and, then, and then he reminded me, it was that coffee that I had. I said, you still awake from that coffee at 5.30 in the evening? <laughs> you better not do that again. <laughs> but coffee doesn't do me that way. It doesn't. Coffee relaxes me. I'm still going to be able to go to sleep at a regular time. It's not gonna keep me up and give me like some power boost. It doesn't do me like that. <laughs> See, it doesn't keep you up either, Alyssa. You said you do love the flavor of coffee, yeah. Remember Anita Baker, she'd be singing and, and, and she did like this. She, I mean, she's stiff as a board, right? And she'd be like this when she sing. But I tell you what, she could hold a note. You hear me? Ooh, she could sing. 
And you couldn't understand hardly anything she was saying. <laughs> um, have you ever seasoned the steaks with coffee? Um, I'm wondering if you're wanting to know, have I seasoned the steaks with cocoa powder? I've seasoned steaks using cocoa powder, but not with coffee. Um, I feel like the coffee would be overwhelming, but there is a cocoa powder rub that you can put on steaks, and it's supposed to be absolutely, um, I, I'm saying this the wrong way. I'm saying this the wrong way. I've seasoned using cocoa powder. I've heard you can use coffee. I hear it's supposed to be delicious. I've just never tried the coffee. I've tried the cocoa powder and it's delicious. I feel like the coffee would be overwhelming, but they say it's delicious. So, Anita Baker's way, yeah, that, that's what she did. That was her little thing, right? And when she really got jiggy, she'd do like, she'd do like this. <laughs> Yeah, the coffee rub. Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> what is that? You can come off of that, Dakota. We're not doing that right now. She sings with her teeth clenched <laughs> and does that. <laughs> Patty LaBelle. Oh, my goodness. Pat Guys, is Patti LaBelle like 80 years old now? My favorite Anita Baker song is No One in the World. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Crazy Chicks is just laughing. Now, Stephanie Mills, like I told you, um, you all, that's what my dad used to like to hear me sing. Stephanie Mills and Regina Bell. He'd be like, go, girl. That is it. You got it. He'd be looking at me. You got it. You got it in you. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was walking around thinking I was the best singer in the world. <laughs> I was. <laughs> here, do this one. Here. Here. And take that, please. Oh, yes, she can. She said, Michelle Lay, how about that? How about that? Let's talk about Michelle Lay. Oh my goodness. Tina Marie, oh yes. Fire and Desire by Tina. You, you know what Tina Marie and Rick James? Uh, listen, so I don't know how old I was. Um, we was at the fair where I grew up at in Columbus, Ohio, and Patti LaBelle was there. I actually walked up to the stage, to the side of the stage, kind of like the front of the stage, to touch her hand, and security rushed me. <laughs> I was younger. My dad took me to see Patti LaBelle. They didn't do nothing to me. They didn't even touch me. <laughs> but Patti LaBelle starts singing, she's all right. She's all right. She started saying it. She started saying she's all right. Like, leave her alone. Isn't that nuts? Is that nuts? So uh, she touched my hand. Uh, so we shook hands. I was, I was on the ground and she was on the stage. Security rushed me. <laughs> they didn't know what I was going to do. You know, because people are nuts. <laughs> but she starts singing, saying, she's all right. It's okay. <laughs> And she grabbed my hand and held my hand. And she kept on singing. So I never actually, I didn't, so they rushed me, but I didn't get bum rushed. You know? <laughs> I didn't get bum rushed. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get bum rushed, but I did get rushed. They was getting ready to get me. And if I had any plans on doing something, they was about to tackle me. Until she said, she's on. <laughs> it was nice though seriously that's a great memory <laughs> yeah they rushed me but they didn't bum rush me you know if you get bum rushed and you get knocked over <laughs> y'all just laughing at me like Gina is nuts <sighs> mm, I don't know if it 
was on TV. But like I said, it was at the Ohio State Fair when I was younger. Outside. You got a cup now. You grabbed your cup of coffee. Oh, see, I, I want the coffee. But what I'm thinking is I don't need it. I don't need it. Because I had that little bit of flour on my chicken. And I had that little bit of tiny bit of potatoes that I, that I did eat. Although I didn't eat all of the potatoes, you know. Um, so when I have a carb, I like to watch the rest of my evening. So since I've already had a little tiny bit of potatoes, a little bit of flour on my uh, chicken, I'm going to refrain from drinking the coffee. So the next thing that I will have is I'm going to do, it's, it's like a, uh, it's a fat burning drink and it's a healthy drink for your stomach. And it's nice and warm. So what I'll do, I'll take a cup of hot water, not too hot, a cup of warm water. And um, I'm going to put two tablespoons of lemon juice, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, the kind with the mother in it, this, the kind that's real cloudy. Mix that in there and drink it. And it's so healthy for your gut. You feel amazing after you drink it. And... Um, it's, it's like a miracle drink. So I'll drink that. That's what I'll do. I'll drink on that drink knowing that I had those little bit of carbs today. Cider, cider ale yummers Oh, Smokey Robinson. How about that? Yes, Latrice, you are the only one that's never seen Color Purple. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on right now? What are you waiting on? The Color Purple is interesting. Um, I just feel like everybody should see it at least one time just to say that you've seen the movie, you know? Latrice, really, sis, Anya? <laughs> Nobody but death can keep me from it. <laughs> I, I do. Stevie Wonder, absolutely. Absolutely. A ribbon in the sky was made about his daughter. Um, I think Stevie Wonder has an amazing voice. I do. I really do. Oh, if the musical's coming out. Okay, that's interesting. You said you can practically recite, recite it. Yeah. <laughs> she was combing that little girl's hair. That little girl was like, ah! <laughs> and, she, and they he told the little girl, be quiet. She said, she can't. It hurts her. <laughs> I mean, she was yanking that little girl's hair. play was good okay yes k coffee i agree with you okay alan says gina i'm back okay you said let's see what are you saying you said team cowboys if i were dj i will turn the party out okay yes luther vandross my dad would play luther vandross Oh my goodness, my dad would love, my dad loved Lou. Oh, guess what song I was, um, uh, Donny Hathaway, a song for you. If you never heard that song, you have to listen to it. So my dad would sing this song to me. Um, and some of the lyrics say, uh, remember when we were together and I was singing this song to you. Um, and it, it has some other lyrics that you, uh, you will have to listen to it, 
But my dad, my dad loved music. So I, I grew up around music. My dad and my mom, they played music, played music on Saturdays. We clean in the house. And I can remember uh, watching my dad dance. And my dad used to like to go skating. My mom was always dancing. So we had like a musical, you know, a, a musical family. But my dad would sing that song to me, Donald Hath, Don, what it, was it? Donnie Hathaway sing a song for you, a song for you. It is one of the best songs ever. And it starts off, uh, how, how, how does it start out? It's like somebody playing on the piano. Somebody playing on the piano in the beginning. And then he just starts singing. And it blow you away if you, hear, if you listen to the song right now. Oh, that's a good one, Saj. Ron Isley, great one. This Christmas is a great one, actually. You say, yes, ma'am, beautiful voice. <laughs> I was listening to that today. And, and when I hear that song, uh, I automatically think about my dad. Oh, that's a good one, Drew. Ah, that's a good one. I could just hear it playing when you said that. The closer I get to you. Great song there. It does. It sends chills up your spine. Angie, but tell me what song you're talking about. Are you talking about a song for you by Donnie Hath Donny Hathaway? Let me see. Angie, tell me if you're talking about Donny Hathaway's song. I, I love everything Howard Hewitt. I have an uncle that can sing just like Howard Hewitt. I have an uncle that can sing just like Howard Hewitt. You hear me? Oh, let's see. Angie says his voice is just great. George Michael, absolutely. George Michael singing, I Gotta Have Faith. Oh, my goodness. Him coming in on that video, playing that. What was he playing? Was he playing the guitar? Gotta Have Faith. That song right there. Thank you, uh, Yvette. Thank you so much. You said Barry White, all his songs. <laughs> Uh-oh. You said a lot of us are old schoolers. I'm definitely an old schooler. It's so funny because when I met my husband, um, when I met my husband, I was 20. Was I 20? <clears throat> and as we were finding out, <clears throat> what songs he, each of us liked and things like that. He looked at me and he said, you, you got an old soul. You got an old soul in you. He couldn't believe that I knew the music that I knew. He's like, you got an old soul. You got an old soul about you. <laughs> yes, have a nice weekend, Rosa. Thank you for coming in. We've lost, yeah, you're right. Billy Joel, oh my goodness, George Michael, and Patti LaBelle, on oh my own, how about that? Oh, that was such a great song. That was such a great song. There, there's a song by Drew, uh, hold on, is it Drew Hill? Hold on, let, let me see. Because I love, when this song comes on, it's something about the song. I don't even know why I feel this way when this song plays, but I love it. Hold on, let me see. It's called, um, let me see. Let me put it in my phone. Drew Hill. 
This is 13 years ago. Hold on guys, I gotta answer this phone call. <laughs> Hello? Hello? No. I love you too. <laughs> you need me? What you, you about to get, uh uh y'all listen. Listen, I just told y'all about him grabbing coffee at this late at night. Don't you know he just told me? Hey, he just told me I'm about to grab some coffee. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, I can't believe it. I cannot believe he just called me to tell me that. He said, are you busy? And I said, well, I'm still on live. He said, oh, I said, you need me? And he said, no, uh, I don't need you. Nothing like that. He said, I'm about to come up and get me some coffee. Are you kidding me? So do you mean he going to wake me up at 4.30 again in the morning? Talking about, guess what? I ain't been asleep yet. He better not do that to me tonight. If he do that to me tonight, if he do that to me tonight, I'm going to get him. Oh, I'm going to get him. <laughs> he better not. Hey, what time is it? It's 7.30. And the last time he did that, it was 5.30. And he was awake until 6 in the morning. That's okay. He bet, uh-uh. Uh-uh. I can't, I'm a giddy. I'm going to giddy. <laughs> oh, that was a good song. Oh, but what I was saying, y'all laughing. He did. That's what the call was just about. That's what the call was just about. He wants some coffee. He got the nerve to want some coffee. Uh, I don't know why we both want coffee today. Oh, but Drew Hill singing five steps. The song begins. Let, 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 me, let me go to the beginning. Hold on. I, I want to hear it, but I don't want y'all. Let me see. I can't hear it. Okay. Yes! Next, next, Odia 66. You said, I've uh, been many places in my life and time. Yes, that song. That song gets me. Because my dad sang it to me. It's the best. And my dad can sing. Listen, he, he, he said, he said, I don't know how much longer. Uh, on on five steps. I don't know how much longer we're, you're going to be here. So I say my prayers every night. One for my mother, one for my father, and one for the love of my life. And if you decide to leave today, then leave tomorrow at the door, right? Listen. Listen. When I hear, when I hear those words, it's like something that balls up in me right here. And I just want to cry. I don't know why. Because I just, because most of all, to be honest, most of all, I love the melody that he's singing in. And then what he's singing about, it's like, oh, <laughs> I want to cry, but I love it. That Five Steps by Drew Hill. You never heard it. You better listen to it. You're going to love it. Jeannie, you're not wearing a hat today. I figured I'd do my hair today. <laughs> I figured I'd do my hair. So I got up this morning, washed my hair, and I said, I ain't putting on no hat today. Let's do what we can to make it curly and no hat. Because, see, listen, on days that I don't feel like doing my hair, then I throw a hat on and you're all good. Because <laughs> this is a lot of hair to... Um, control <laughs> and keep curly and all that good stuff and I can normally just put a hat on when I don't feel like doing my hair and wham bam and we're out the door you know but um, if I have the energy like I did today then I'll take the time to do my hair I, I got up this morning and I washed it and then I used a diffuser to get some volume in it so yeah no hat today <laughs> so when you see me in the hat it's because i ain't have the energy to do my hair <laughs> i 
Okay, so you said, Gina, can you tell me about your overbite when you was younger? I may have told you about that. Um, that's kind of interesting that you say that. Um, I, I developed the overbite because I used to suck my thumb. I used to say, you can, cut, you can see the overbite. Um, I used to suck my right thumb and I sucked it so much I had a permanent cut right here in my thumb to where my teeth would rest on it. You know, right there. But I sucked this thumb and I had a blanket. I would twirl a blanket. I had like a netted blanket that my grandma made for me. So I twirl on the blanket like this and I suck my right thumb. I suck my thumb until it was time to go to high school. When I went to high school, I thought, oh no. Here I am, I'm 15 years old and I suck my thumb. I just told myself, cold turkey, I said, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. And right when I got in high school, I stopped sucking my thumb and never went back for it. But I never lost that feeling for wanting to uh, rub on a blanket. So I still, to today, I have a special blanket um, that is knitted that I like to rub on and it puts me to sleep. So I still have that same, and my dad tells me that when you were a baby, that first day you came home, you were sucking your thumb, and you did that with the blanket. So that's just, that's just what I did. And so still to today, I have a blanket, I rub it, I don't suck the thumb anymore. I knew I had to grow up when I, when I turned 15 and got in high school. So that's the story a little bit. I may have told you that story before. I was wondering when you just said that, like, how would she know that? <laughs> you used to lick your fingers for some reason. Let's see, you used to lick your fingers for some reason. Oh, okay, yeah. That's interesting. Have a good evening. Thank you for coming in, Nancy. Absolutely. Oh, your brother sucked his thumb. You sucked your thumb until you was in your early 20s. Okay, okay. Yeah, I still have a blanket. And I am not at ease and calm. I can go to sleep without the blanket. Yes, I can. But I love to have that blanket, especially a knitted blanket that I can just grab. And, and like I do like this to it. I, I don't I don't know why. It's just something I've been doing since I was a baby. <laughs> I know I've heard of people grabbing people's ears and rubbing other people's ears and, and grabbing your navel and all. Uh uh I'm not into all that. Uh uh <laughs> uh uh <laughs> Look at my mouth. Uh uh <laughs> No <laughs> No, I think that's where it gets kinda nuts, you know. <laughs> You like the sound of the dryer making you sleep. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> she tore that blanket up. Um, my dad wind up taking the blanket from me, putting it in his closet. I always knew where it was, and every once in a while I would look in his closet just to look at it or just to touch it. But I would never take it out. <laughs> I know, that's weird. I know, that's weird. <laughs> that's a good sound, the dryer. I think so. It's kind of interesting. My dryer, may, is it our dryer? No, our washing machine's been making a funny noise lately. When you're... Oh, okay. Oh, they suck their thumbs and rub their ears. Ah, yeah, that's 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 different to me. <laughs> I've I've seen and heard that. I've heard that before. Yeah. Rain is soothing. Rain will make you sleepy, right? Rain will definitely make you sleepy. S 
See, when it comes when it comes to me, I don't want the sound. I'd I'd rather everything be nice and quiet when I go to sleep. Cause I want to hear what's going on. I want to hear everything that's going on in the house. I don't want to have the TV up loud and not know what's going on around me. <laughs> oh, you got to have the fan noise. Yeah, some people like to have the fan to be nice and cool. Now, when it comes to my husband, he if when it's winter time and it's snowing out, he likes to open the window. <laughs> he likes to open the window just a little bit to feel that snow <laughs> what is it that he likes to feel the snow or the the fresh snow breeze <laughs> and i'm covered up like this and i would wake up with little knots on my head <laughs> guess what he said i'd be covered up like this and a blanket got my head covered because i'm so cold and guess what he just said he said and i'll wake up with little knots and scratches all over me <laughs> I know who did it he too. said, he said, and I know who did it too. <laughs> <'Cause> he was <laughs> mad. <laughs> he said, because I was mad at him. <laughs> and they <laughs> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I wake up like, ooh, how'd this get here? <laughs> I done knocked you out in your sleep. I was so cold. Mad, <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> they said she was mad. <laughs> yeah. Remember the girl said he said well. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is funny. <laughs> For real. I don't, he he like when it's really cold out. He like is something about like in in our bedroom we have a don't get on there Dakota in our bedroom we have a beautiful ceiling fan and it it you can put it on different levels you can change the lights switch from it and and you know it, it'll keep you nice and cool he like no I want the that that weather air <laughs> to come in. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I don't. I'm cold. <laughs> He's not wake up little knots all over my head, scratches. <laughs> He's so silly. <laughs> I don't like to be too cold when I'm sleeping. I like to be nice and warm. I like to be nice and warm. Yeah, he, <laughs> baby, <laughs> that's a good one, Ron. Baby, <laughs> hold on, I'm going to call him. <laughs> I'm going to call him. Ron, that was a good one. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hey, guess, guess what Ron said? I told him, I said, I said, I don't like to be cool when I'm sleeping. I said, I like to be warm, right? And, and Rob Wilson said, he needs to cover his feet. <laughs> you know how you said you like your feet uncovered? <laughs> he needs to cover his feet. That's why. <laughs> he remembered that. <laughs> he remembered it. <laughs> He remembered that. Oh, I know what's wrong. He needs to cover his feet. <laughs> All right. Love you. <laughs> he laughing. He laughing so hard. <laughs> he is cracking up right now. <laughs> you don't like your feet being hot? I don't like my feet being cold. And I can't, I can't sleep with socks on. But I have to have them feet covered up. Mm -mm. <sighs> oh, you like the sound of the ocean breeze or the sound of the wind? Okay. It was funny, right? Because Ron remembered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I honestly feel like, here's what I feel like. I feel like that chicken dinner didn't take us no time to cook, did it? 
I'm saying just being honest. Do you feel like it took forever in a day? I don't. I feel like the broccoli was quick, the mashed potatoes was quick, and once we got to frying chicken, it was done, right? Not at all, yeah. It was easy, right? A lot of, there's a lot of people that, that just are afraid to try it. And I just think if they just tried it just once, they'll be like, wait, this wasn't hard. <laughs> Derek Heath said, who wears shoes to bed? <laughs> Oh, man. Listen what my grandmom told me that my dad would do when he was 13 years old. Gina, your meal's always quick and easy. Thank you. <laughs> Drew said, Derek, you crazy. <laughs> Listen, my grandmom said, my dad's mom, she said um, that when my dad was 13 years old, she could not wake him up for school she said she did everything in the world to get my dad up for school when he was 13 and he just wasn't having it she said she'd be downstairs making breakfast or getting ready for work or whatever she had to do she could hear him upstairs moving around and getting dressed and everything but then she come up there and guess what he was doing I'm a, I'm on I'm gonna let's see. Let me point this down. Oh, ow, ow, I'm smashing my finger. So she she said, so my dad would be laying on the bed like this, right? With his hand hanging. Here, let me grab my shoe. I just got some slides. Look, my dad would be. Oh, I didn't know this kind of matches my shirt. I just threw them on. Um my dad would be doing this. He'd be laying in the bed, but he's patting his shoes on the floor like this, like he's getting dressed. And my grandma thought the whole time he's getting dressed. And she caught him red-handed. She went upstairs in his room one day, and he was asleep. <laughs> he was dead asleep. And he was hitting his shoes on the floor, trying to make it look like he was getting dressed and he wasn't. And my grandma said, and from that day on, she said, cause he gave her, you know, he gave her a hard time. She said, from that day on, she said, don't you know I took your daddy out of school? This is my grandma talking to me. She said, I took your dad out, hold on, I'm trying to fix the camera, so don't worry about it shaking. Uh, she says, so I took your daddy out of school at the age of 13. And I told him, you are going to go to work. You're going to go to work, and you're going to help me around this house. And guess what he did? He got his first orderly job at a hospital. Well, I don't know if the orderly job was at 13. I don't believe it was. The first job that he got was shining shoes. He learned how to be a barber. He he so he did so he used to cut hair, and then he um, was an orderly in a hospital where after people had surgeries and stuff like that, he would clean up after the surgeries and and also uh, take people and like after they had surgery take them down to the recovery place or take them down to the car that's getting ready to pick them up and things like that. Is that an interesting story? And then in 1972, uh, my dad became a correctional officer and he um, was a correctional officer for I believe 36 years. Don't quote me on how many years because I definitely could be wrong. But then, you know, he's retired now, of course. It is interesting, right? She said, I wasn't going to play no games with your daddy. 
She said, I couldn't get him up every single day. And when I came up there and seen him knocking them shoes on the floor and he was snoring, she said, I said, uh-uh, you coming out of school and you gonna help me, you gonna go to work. She said, and he did. <laughs> he went to work. <laughs> and my dad told me the story about why he stopped being an orderly. My dad had told me something had happened to where he was take uh something had happened to where he was putting a man in the car so his family could take him home. He lifted him up to put him in the car to take him home. Something happened and poop went all over my dad and my dad said I was my dad said I was done. He said I he said I was done after that. He said I wasn't going to be no orderly no more. He said that that was it on that one. Mm -mm, my dad said that was it. <laughs> he said so that's how the orderly job stopped. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> and then when he became the correctional officer, he had a situation where this gentleman um, that was locked up had, when my dad had walked in, my dad did the night shift. He said, he, he told my dad, he said, listen, um, Sir, you know, he said my dad's name, and he said, they didn't let me use the restroom. This is the, the, the person that was in the prison, told my dad, they didn't let me use the restroom all day today. Can you just let me use the restroom? I, I just got to use the restroom. And my dad thought about when he was an orderly and he got poop all over him. My dad said, now, when I was walking the floor, I knew I had smelled something, but I didn't know what it was. He said, but when I looked in the cell, when I came closer and I looked in the cell, my dad said poop was all over the walls in there. And my dad said, I know that that, that kid, he ain't like that. So what happened? So the guy automatically started explaining like, sir, they didn't let me go all day. Can you just let me go? And my dad started thinking like, okay, now, if I let him go, is he going to try to throw poop on me? Is he going to try to wipe it on? What is he going to try to do when I get him out of the cell? My dad said, so I trusted him. He said, I let him out. And he went and used the restroom and took a shower and came back. And my dad said that he made him make a promise that he was going to go back in that cell and clean it up. And my dad said, he was a good kid. He said, I, he never gave me any problems. He said, he went back in there and cleaned it up. He said, so I don't know what happened before I walked in there. He said, but the first thing I thought about was when I was an orderly and that poop went all over me and I quit that day. He said, I didn't want that to happen when I was a correctional officer. And I seen this situation. He said, I didn't know what I was walking into. My dad would come home with a, a come home with so many stories of being a correctional officer um so many interesting stories and he would come home just telling us different things and we we learned so many different things of why you don't want to be locked up you know why uh you want to walk a straight line because of the things that my dad has seen in jail and he would come home and tell us like listen if you acting up at home or whatever, you better get it right. Because I know how they're going to treat you up in there. My dad's like, I seen it. And he'd come home and tell us those stories. And we'd be sitting on the floor listening. Like, what? Really? This and that? Yeah. My dad got some interesting stories. You could just listen to his stories all day. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Class lesson today. Don't go to prison. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Wee. If an inmate punks you, they will all try to punk you. Oh, wait. Mm. I can remember my dad going to some place. I don't know what it, what place it was. But he would get, um, like, mind trigger games. Um, just little games that they could play um, that would make their minds work. Like how to get, um, it could be, uh, what, like, things like, how do you get something untwisted or how do you get the ball to move to something? But I don't know where, I wonder where he got all those games from. And then I think on Fridays he would do like a pizza party for them. <clears throat> Whoever, whatever floor he was on or whatever. I don't know how it worked. But I bet you they loved my dad up there. I bet you they did. I bet you they did. Because you heard the way the one guy said he said, because my dad's name is Reggie. He said, they didn't let me go. As soon as my dad walked in, sir, they didn't let me go. Can you just let me go? My dad said, I thought about it. And I thought, oh, well, guess what else my dad said? My dad said, because if he tried anything, my dad said, I was going to knock him out. You hear me? <laughs> yes. My dad said, if he tried it, I was taking him out. My dad said, if he tried anything, he said, and he didn't. And my dad said, I would love to know the story of what happened and why this kid acted up that way and why they didn't let him use the bathroom. <laughs> my dad did. <laughs> he said, if he tried anything, he said, I'm just saying to myself, if he tried anything, I'm, I'm taking him out. <laughs> Those prison documentaries be something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Denise, what is that? Sad, you got to hear my Gina Young impression. It's on spot. Oh, is that right? What are you saying? Do you hear me? Is that what you're saying, uh, <laughs> Drew? You're probably saying that. <laughs> Some people like to, there are so many people that like to uh, impersonate me. Like they'll say, um, hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. Little bit loves when I say that. I don't know how I even developed that. I, when I first started the channel, I needed something to say. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. And I wasn't showing myself on camera. So I developed that and I just kept on saying it. So I've been saying that for about five years now. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. <laughs> oh, you love the prayer. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, Gina, I do your intro too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't heard that. You said, have I heard the song Shut Up and Dance With Me? I have not heard that. Oh, you do? You love a good prison movie or documentary? Okay, okay. Oh, man, you would love to talk to my dad because he's got so many stories. They, my dad told us one time there was somebody there that they would have to take him in to um, the hospital because he would take a pencil 
and like push it in his ear or like put it somewhere else <laughs> like where you pee at just to get out just to get out just to get out and he knew that doing that they would have to travel him out of the prison you know into the hospital and he would be able to see the daylight you know and so that's what he wanted and and so um he would do that a lot and every time he did that they take him to the hospital to get the pencils taken out so many interesting stories i heard my whole life yeah <laughs> i know i know christopher says i can't what's that I can't, I can't see it. Hold on, let me see this message, y'all. Gina, I love your stories. My dad cut my thumb with a razor blade. <laughs> that is how I stopped sucking my fingers. True story. Oh, Lord, Lynette. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Ooh. Yes. That's a story, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> That's what Christopher says. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Gina. I have a brother named Avery. Oh, okay. That's nice. Silence of the Lambs, favorite of all times. Oh, hey, that is a good movie. Seriously, that, that is a story, isn't it, Crazy Chicks? But like I said, I like those people in there. Um, I feel like that they... Oh, the dunk contest is tonight. Is anybody watching the dunk contest tonight? Let me see. Hold on. Okay, hold on, y'all. Oh, you said yes. Okay. Dunk contest is nice. It's kind of fun. What dunk contest where um like the basketball players is doing tricks, they'll like um what they'll do get give me that. Let me see. <clears throat> they'll do things like flipping and different types of dunks and stuff. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, but the, it, it's really fun for everybody to watch. Even like people that don't watch basketball, you would totally like this. So, oh, that was a good movie, Drew. <laughs> you said, oh, sports. <laughs> Oh, wonder what time it comes on. Let's see, I just asked him what time does it come on? What time does it come on? 8 p.m. Oh, guys, it comes on in 15, 15 minutes. <laughs> You're telling lies. No, -uh, it come on. Come on, 15 minutes. Eastern, 8, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So y'all going to watch it? I'm definitely going to watch it. Me and my husband are going to watch it because he just reminded me. Hey, listen, somebody out there in YouTube land. Oh, uh, Dakota, go to the um, steak and cheese video. There's an impersonator on there that I need to uh, report and I need to block them. They told Mildred that she won something. So we're going to report that to YouTube and block them. So go to the uh, cheesesteak video and we'll do that. Listen, guys, did y'all enjoy the video? The live. If you enjoyed the live, give me red hearts all up in this comment section. I love y'all so much from the bottom of my heart. And um, what I'm excited about is Monday. Well, I don't know because I'm going to switch some things up. I'm seeing the hearts. Thank you all. 
Okay, hold on. Don't do nothing yet, Dakota. Just wait. I hate, listen, I love y'all too. I'm glad that I was able to entertain you all with a great recipe that you can take to your family and loved ones. Um, y'all, watch the, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Dunk Contest. And then we can talk about it when we come back on. Um, now, some things is going to change a little bit. Um, some things is going to change a little bit when it comes to the lives. And I need to get all the details before I tell you. So uh, when it comes to Monday's live, um, I'll, I'll check and see if I'm going to be doing a live on Monday. But we'll see. Uh, I'm going to be updating you all because I got some new stuff going on. Um, I had a great time. I hope you all had a great time. And if you didn't get to see the whole live, make sure to watch the replay, okay? I love y'all so much. I ain't getting off of here without a big old, big old, big old hug. Give me a hug, y'all. I love y'all so much. Yes, I do. I love y'all. I'm so glad y'all enjoyed. Hey, listen, I aim to give you guys a great time, a great recipe, good, clean fun over here at Gina Young's. You hear me? It's always going to be nice and clean. <laughs> good night. I love y'all, and I'll see ya. We'll see if it's going to be Monday. And if it's not Monday, I'm going to keep you updated on everything. Like I said, I got some new stuff going on, okay? We got a new another business going on. Okay, so... Um, I'll update you once I get the updates on when these lives are going to be and when they won't be able to be. But we'll talk about it, okay? I love y'all. God bless each and every one of you. Good night.